look at that fucking opening makes it makes it look like we we do shit like we know what we're talking about like <laughs> it's a real show it really does look like a real fucking show who did the animation was that who did that jc did you do that bamf man jump in here bamf you do uh, that open i did that but i used a template what does that mean uh somebody like built a photo collage thing and i just went in and i plugged in all of our show artwork to it better than i could have done so i i i think i had a small hand in the uh creative fucking i classy well thank you um i enjoy watching it, it makes me feel good hmm. don't go away we weren't done come back bam <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for putting that together. I don't give a fuck if it is a template. <laughs> you you cared enough to send the very best. Fuck. <laughs> I done. think good energy. You know, people should get excited about the show. It reminds me of the bar. Because, like, when that's playing in the bar, everyone's like, wow. Ah. Not so much here. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> no. Not, not in your basement? No. Not at all. <laughs> uh, I guess we should start the show proper. Kids, welcome back to Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernardin. Hey. Ho. Um, we are uh, gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Um, to fucking talk geek shop, kids. Me and Mark, we got thoughts. Feelings. And we're angry. Are we? Not angry enough to get them clicks. <laughs> I fucking I like my YouTube is a sea of fucking, you know, go woke, go broke, why Marvel's fucking failed and we told you and stuff like that. And a lot of them have like fucking high hit counts. Mm -hmm. We should call this episode. Everything wrong with Marvel. Yeah, or fuck the Marvels. Worst movie ever made. And then dot, dot, dot. And then, yeah, that's the card. Mm. And then, you know, inside the description, dot, 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 is what the internet is saying. <laughs> Kevin and Mark <laughs> have different opinions. You know, nice. bait and switch. The thing I was accused of with fucking Masters of the Universe to actually do it with this channel. <laughs> Bamf man, get in here. Bamf. There he is. Can't we get some like outrageous art cards every week? <laughs> thing that you know, show me and Mark stepping on something beloved or something like that. It's like um have you ever seen on those like pickup trucks? It's like Calvin looking over his shoulder peeing on somebody. Or peeing oh. on something. Maybe that's just every week. It's you guys looking over your shoulder, peeing on whatever the thing is that came out that week. There you go. Sure. But be like they get a. We you have to change it up. You have to change up the image. That's what they all those angry sites do. Like there's new artwork for every video, and it's always a series of. Like fucking, this is the worst with outrageous eyes on people and fucking, you know, they fuck with the artwork for whatever it is they're mad about and shit like that. They get hit. We should start trading an outrage, man. I mean, basically, you're suggesting JC go undercover, like intern at Fox News for a while and like learn all of their secrets and then come back. And I don't think we even have to go that far. I think the secrets are apparent. <laughs> on the front page of you, my YouTube, it just says, man, like fucking, you hate on something. There are enough people to be like, what the fuck? Because you, you know what the formula is. It's very simple. Um, you will, get, like, if we just put up our show art, which is like, this is what we talk about, maybe you get some cats who are like, oh, I'm interested in those things, or I like those guys. But if you shit on something, not only do you get the fucking all the clicks from people who are like, I fucking hate it too. But then you get the clicks from the people who are like, what? I love that fucking thing. How how dare you? And we'll watch it enough to, to register 
the click. So I think all of our artwork should now be outrage driven <laughs> over the top, you know, just fucking nihilism. <laughs> I think we have to have a chat about what you're watching, that this is your For You page. <laughs> it's just... I, it's because I click on videos about, like, uh, like here, what is it? Not Screen Rant, Screen Crush. Mm -hmm. that, like, they never make negative videos. That, and what's the other one that I watched? The dude, Eric Voss. New Rock Stars or something like that. Mm -hmm. They do my favorite videos about, like, Hey, here's what we saw, and here's the breakdown, and here's some fucking Easter eggs. It's never like, fuck this in its ass. It ruined my child. You know what I'm saying? It's all that shit. The fact. The, it, doesn't being that angry make well, you on. tired? Because of that, Mark, just to answer Mark's question. Because of that, I think that's how, you know, videos of people who don't like things show up in my group. I'm, I'm probably, you know, let's be honest. During Masters Universe, I'm sure I fucking clicked on one or two fucking rah videos. Mm -hmm. My algorithm is like, oh, he must like outrage. And it's like, I'm I'm not. I'm so, like, I don't like outrage. But fuck if that don't get clicks. So I think we should rethink <laughs> everything. Let's go <laughs> ultra fucking mean about everything how everything sucks and, and our childhood's been ruined and fucking like, i mean if you ask the internet that's how i am every time all the time anyway <laughs> great we're halfway there I just, gotta make it. I just gotta stop liking things so much i, I don't even have to do that we don't have to change a fucking thing just change the artwork it's advertising right remember that whole episode of Mad Men when he's like it's toasted there you go <laughs> this is us getting toasted that's all It'd be even better because they'd watch the entire episode, right? Waiting for the moment where we are done building the thing up and we're like, but it sucks. And then we just end the show and they'd be like, oh, it must be next week. And so our viewer retention we'll would be think it's next week. They would immediately be on to us. Episode one. They'd be <laughs> like, they didn't, they didn't shit on it at all. I think that card artwork. <laughs> Maybe uh, fibbing to us, and then by the second show, they'd be like, "Oh, I get it. You're lying. <laughs> You're like, you edged us for four hours, and you never fucking let us come. And now I'm supposed to come back." <laughs> Thank you for putting it into the parlance of our times. You're right. It would be <laughs> it would be edging them with a card and then not delivering. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you flip a few, right? As they're sitting there waiting for you to shit on something, maybe they're just like, "Hey, you know." Talking about things you like as opposed to like just fucking carping on everything you hate. Maybe there's something to this. I doubt mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Outrage. As we know the format. It's that simple. Why are we even fucking talking about it? Let's just implement. We have to make people mad. Or no, we don't have to make people mad. We have to be as mad as people get based on, you know, movies. <laughs> Can you... <laughs> Can you wrestle up that kind of outrage, March? Uh, I, I love the, the short-term solution to a long-term problem. You know what we do? We're gonna just fake it. It'll be fine. It'll there's last some, a week. There's some producer's angle into this. You're like, no, a podcaster could fucking you know make a fucking hit by losing a lot of money or whatever the fuck. <laughs> just sounds like it'd be very tiring for three people who pay their bills in other ways. I just, I can't get that mad. Like, I, nothing, nothing, things in the real world don't make me that mad. You know, why would a, why would, why would a fucking movie that, like, I didn't invest in other than, like, my time, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. Just it's yeah. Like I've worked on things that were shitty, and I'm not as angry <laughs> as they are about a thing they did not work on. <laughs> that probably they saw for free, and are somehow incensed in its by its existence. I ain't shitting on it. I say we need to adopt that. That needs to be the way <laughs> forward for Fat Man Beyond. In order for us to survive and thrive in this angry 
hate clicky economy. We gotta, gotta, we gotta tell them. We gotta carry the gospel, dude. Go woke, go broke, or some shit like that. Maybe that's what we change the name of the show to. Go woke, go broke, go beyond. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of fucking videos I saw. I didn't watch them all, but I mean, I just saw like I scrolled through because I was looking for the screen. You know, eventually found both Screen Rant and New Rock Stars because I love that like. Hey, did you know this? Like in this screen rant video uh, that's up for the Marvels, he talks about the post credit scene, which mm -hmm. spoilers if you haven't seen the Marvels, um, hurry. Uh, but, but um, you know, I'm sure by now you've heard about the post credit scene, which in like in another era, would fucking break the internet, break the world. People be like, holy fuck. They're crossing over with the fucking X Men and shit like that. And now it's just people going like, you know, mm -hmm. too little, too late, whatever the fuck. But in any event, the dude is screaming rant, the dude who's always working with the little dog. Um, he theorized that uh the spoilers if you haven't seen the Marvels, uh, at the end, Monica Rambo winds up in X Men world. But which X-Men world, we're not sure. But we see the Beast, and the Beast is played by Kelsey Grammer. Again, his voice, and he had played him in the movies and shit. Yeah, put that spoilers up. So, you know, everyone's like, holy fuck, the X-Men. You know, but then there was also Binary, who was never in any of the movies. But that was Maria Rambo, Monica Rambo's mom, mm -hmm. which in this universe, she's Binary. Binary is a character that goes back to, like, 1982 X-Men. You know, and then retcon later on. I think they made it a, a different origin story than what it had in '82. But um, the, what the character had in '82, regardless, she winds up in the X Men universe. What the new, what the Screen Rant guy said was, that's the cartoon universe of X Men, not like the the X Men universe we're used to from the movies, but. The animated, a live action presentation of the animated X Men universe from the old cartoon that they are now about to sequelize on Disney Plus, like X Men '97 mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck they're mm -hmm. called. And it was a pretty fucking so rock solid theory, man. Like I was, that guy sold me. He sold me like, remember Loose Change, that fucking movie where they're like, not <laughs> Eleven was a fucking conspiracy. And because it had that creepy score, you're like, I believe every word. <laughs> That's until, you know, you turn it off and then you're like, wait a second. Um, that 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 had the same kind of effect on me, man. Screen rant guys going like that. That's going to be the cartoon next, man. I was like, I'm sure they would like you to stop talking now. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't compare us to loose change. Stop, oh, no. stop, stop. That video has got a lot of hits on YouTube as well. Mark. Out of that book. <laughs> start, start combining all of our content with conspiracy theories. <laughs> um, but I like that idea. I like the idea that Beast was the animated version of Beast. And their argument was like he's in a white coat and he's got the glasses. He looks like the animated, the animated, the cartoon version of Beast. My uh, question to you, though, I mean, yeah. we're going super deep, super fast. Yes. Um, That's how I fuck, Mark. Hey, super deep, super fast. It's fucking I'm Jason the Thomas. Opposite guy. I, I don't fucking, I, I'm, I'm all like fucking, I'm, I don't know why I'm fucking pitching my kids to <laughs> you and the audience, but I'm not a straight to it guy. I'm a, I'm a, a, a lot of foreplay guy. Anyway, moving on. Just, <laughs> just I don't have the wrong idea that like, <laughs> straight um, to it. If you were going to do that with the animated universe, then why do you get Kelsey Grammer? Because Kelsey Grammer is not from the animated universe. He's just from the movie universe. True, but I think they're going to... What am I talking about? I don't think. The Screen Rant guy thinks that they're going to bring from a couple different eras of X-Men. Like, we're not going to get Patrick Stewart, because remember they twisted his head in, mm. in uh, Wanda? Or, I mean, rather, Doctor Strange 2, the Multiverse of Madness, or whatever the fuck. Um, but like we'll get James McAvoy, Professor X. So they're gonna mix up the. I'm and so exhausted by all, all of, this. of the 
all of the <laughs> all of the animated adventures are going to be canon. And his his evidence is kind of strong. He's like, look, what they did, what if, and all that shit's canon. So they're like, they don't accidentally do things there. He's like, this has been fucking thought out and shit. I'm, I mean, nothing has made me more tired as of late than multiverses and thinking about multiverses and multiversal storytelling and is this or isn't this and what are they going to choose and how's it going to be? Like, I just, I mean, I, man, I just don't care. Oh, I, I want to care. Sign of old age, Mark. I'm gonna be 52 years old. I don't have it in me to give a fuck. I'm 53. That means I should be over this shit too. But still, <laughs> I just don't have it in me to I track have... which Earth we're on. Is this Earth 818, 616, 214? Like I don't have it. Do you th- like? I think it's and... much. It's easy to see now in retrospect. But don't you feel? And they couldn't have done it, so this is ridiculous. But like, ideally, for people who like love the early Marvel Universe movies or like them all up until like ten minutes ago or whatnot, like ending at Endgame, oh, you know, I would have broken my heart because I fucking make all these movies, man. I'll watch lesser. I'll watch mid Marvel. I don't give a fuck. But I'm sure on some level. There's like, man, I wish we had either just like fucking bowed out gracefully for a few years and then came back with like X-Men and Fantastic Four. Maybe not. Maybe they're like, look, and then we'd all lose jobs. Like once the money machine is going, you can't stop. But what happens when the money machine doesn't cough up money for the first time like ever? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. I, we're going to get into it right now and stuff. But yeah, we'll get there. We got some shit to take care of first. Yeah. Um, Shall How we? Doing? Good. <laughs> I'm good. Let me, let me tell you where I know. Boy, we just dove right into it and shit. Uh, <laughs> I have been through some shit, Mark. Not me so much uh, as uh, my wife. So two weeks ago, we were um, moving. Remember, remember the my put my house up for sale. I moved out of my house mm-hmm. that I lived in for like 20 years and shit. Bought a house in the valley. We moved there. Um, and then we went back east uh, over the summer, made uh, the 430 movie. Um, then we came back and our house went up on the market, I think, when we got back. Like there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about it, and Hollywood Reporter and stuff. And um, by all rights, that's where the story, you know, ends we bought a new house we moved into it we sold our old house life goes mm. uh two weeks ago we moved back into the original house so i am now back in in the same house that i've been for decades um i'm not in the same library where i always was uh my in-laws used to live with us gail and byron as you know uh and they got their own place so i took their old room over and this is going to be my new office i'm as you can see we're i'm still in the process of unpacking uh all the stuff was moved back the moving people were like you're gonna do this shit again four more months (laughs) um we were in the process we moved on monday tuesday wednesday thursday thursday night i had to leave Um, some people are like why the fuck did you move back in your house long story but essentially it's just a financial thing at the end of the day made more sense for us and sentimental like nobody wanted to give up the house and stuff this is where we raised our kid but anyway that's not here nor there because the big part of the story is coming so i left on a thursday night the november 2nd because i was going back east to smod castle cinemas and um we were doing a show with the russo brothers which Mm -hmm. we did and was great We'll eventually put it up on on YouTube and stuff. Uh, but what a great show. Uh, they came out and chit-chatted and <clears throat> we did their entire career and stuff. Um, so I left on Thursday night on a red eye. Left this house at 10 o'clock. Um, went to the airport, got on my plane, you know, got on the plane like 1120 or whatever. Texted my wife, say, I'm on the plane. Didn't hear from her figure. She went to sleep. 
landed in New Jersey at seven or eight. Uh, first text I get is from my kid going like, have you landed? Can you call me? Never a good sign. Nope. My kid is not, she doesn't text me at what would be four or five in the morning, her time in Los Angeles. She didn't text that early. She's like a late sleeper. So I call her and, and she's like, before, you know, you say anything, everyone's fine. And when somebody says that, you know, somebody's fucked up. Mm. And I was like, what happened? And she told me the story of what happened. So I leave here to go to the airport at uh, 10 o'clock. About an hour later, Jennifer locks up the house, double bolts the front door. Um, you know, she's got the two German shepherds, Lucky and Birdie, uh, goes up to bed, you know, has her water, she puts on the nightstand. Uh, we have a bed that's on a one step up platform. So in the in the primary bedroom suite, the bed is in what they call an alcove. A recessed area that's just the bed. It's got curtains and stuff. And there's one step to get up to it. This step I've slipped on many times over the course of two decades living in that house. If you're wearing socks and it's wood floor, about phew, la la la. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, years ago at one point, fucking slipped and split her chin on these fucking same steps. So they're one step, man. You would think like, oh my God, but it's it can get you. And it got her that night. She turned off the light and fucking spun, you know, turned to get into bed and fucking her foot went out. And she went back and mercifully missed the end table, which was like this far away from hitting her fucking temple. That would have been it. Instead, she lands on the stair on her hip. Now, my wife has very pronounced hips. Um, I think I could say this. Yes. Um, you know, they're like fucking handlebars. Um, I know that because I've used them as such. So she's she's got these pretty pronounced hips. She landed on her fucking hip. What happened was her ball and socket joint of her leg <laughs> smashed through her fucking hip. Uh, he femur, I don't know what the fuck they call it. Shattered her hip. And she went down, boom. So she's in the dark, screaming in agony. She said, like, look, I've given birth. This was 5,000 times where she's like, I never knew this type of pain existed. She said it was excruciating. Dogs are like all around her and shit, but she can't fucking move. And she's like in agony. She has her phone on her. Mercifully, she calls Harley. And she's like, I need you to get over here because I'm about to call the ambulance. And, you know, you got to break into the house because I double bolted the front door. And sure enough, the ambulance got there with, with the fire truck. And, you know, they we have a keyless entry punch code and shit. But if you've double bolted the door, don't fucking matter. You're not getting in. But the fire truck's like, Hey man, we got the ladder. So they put a ladder up to the second story um, where bedroom windows were open and shit. And they're about to go in to minister to Jen. Who's like screaming on the fucking floor in the dark. And then the two German shepherds appear at the window to be like, to fucking German shepherd, man, to be like, who the fuck is entering the house? Whoa, 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 whoa. And the EMTs are like, we can't go in the house if the dogs are there. Like, we can't take that risk. So Harley and Austin, her boyfriend, show up. And Austin breaks into the house, goes and unbolts the front fucking door. EMTs come in. Took six of them to get Jennifer out. She was screaming the whole fucking time, Harley said. Like, just in agony. Her leg was attached to her body, but just fucking right. dead because it was not functioning and shit uh they couldn't take her to cedars because it was fucking crowded so they took her to the kaiser permanente on sunset and she was in the er for a long fucking time and and then on saturday so that was thursday night saturday morning she had fucking emergency hip replacement surgery she's 52 dude it's not like we're like in our 70s and it's like oh we replaced the hip and shit and she's not prince so she hasn't been doing a lot of dancing and there was no like, yeah, exactly. Like all oh, the wear and tear I put on this, I knew I was going to get a hip. It was, you know, never in a million years, freak fucking accident. And now sets her back like two months. So I have been home <clears throat> here with her ever since and abandoning everything else and just playing 
nursemaid. Is that a, you could say nursemaid, right? That's not mm-hmm. I've because I've been both nurse and maid. And you know, it's um it, a lot of like somebody who's in agony, fucking like once she's sitting. We're laying down. She's okay. But getting to that position, you know, ouch. Mm-hmm. Get in the bathroom, ouch. All this shit. So I, I like, I haven't left this house and I don't know how fucking long because um, I've just been like knee deep in, in, in recovery and shit. Um, mm-hmm. What a, what a weird turn of events. <laughs> um i so yeah if i seem a little all over the place my apologies however i did since i'm here and sitting with jen all day i get to watch a lot of shit i'm I'm trying to spin it you know like (laughs) because nobody wants to nobody wants to bust their hip at age fucking 52 you know what i'm saying so (laughs) you know what that comes along they told me when i had my heart attack they're like you may suffer fucking depression because you're middle-aged middle-aged man and with a heart attack they tend to suffer depression i never suffered depression but fucking jennifer shattering her hip bro like you know she's skirting toward depression because it's like the fuck man like am i an old person and shit like that so i'm trying to spin this whole thing as like Mm. this is a staycation like fucking you know, we get to stay home and watch a bunch of fucking movies and stuff. Back in the old house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Meant so, to be, baby. <laughs> it ain't just like, you know, get me to the fucking toilet. You got to keep a motherfucker's spirits up, right? Because that will lend toward healing. You don't want her to fall down some rabbit hole where she's like, fuck life. And, you know, that I, that could happen. It's, it, when I had my heart attack, I was in and out of the hospital in fucking less than 50 hours. Um, you know, and that's a testimony to fucking how good my doctor was and shit like that. And I didn't ever really feel like, oh my God, I've fucking been felt. I honestly still have never dealt probably with the psychological, emotional fallout of coming that close to fucking death. I immediately started doing routines about it and doing it on talk shows and shit like that. Um, but that came from the fact that I never felt like I'd been felled. Like I said, I was in and out of the hospital in less than 50 hours. Jennifer is laid up for minimum two months. Like she knows Mm-mm. something happened to her and shit. And that's what my doctor said to me about the heart attack. He, the day I left the hospital, he goes, how are you feeling? I, said, I feel great. And he goes, well, that's the problem. I said, why? And he goes, because time was when you had what you had back in the day, We'd have to saw you open, crack your fucking, you know, rib cage, go in there, fuck your, play with your heart, and then put you back together. And you would lay there for two months healing from that alone, from the chest crack. And you would know that you went through something. He goes, but look, you feel great and you're walking out of the hospital. He's going, that's very deceptive because you could wind up going right back to the same behaviors. And, and I could see you here if I'm lucky. You know, a couple of years from now, and if I'm unlucky, fucking you drop dead. So the choice is yours. And so I, that was when I was like, I'll go vegan and shit. Um, although this week, man, I feel like like I, since I haven't gone to Runyon in a week and I've just been sitting around eating comfort food with the wife. I feel I feel I got to get back to Runyon. <laughs> I got to get back to my hill. Yeah, I really do, man. It makes a difference. And not, you know, some people are like. I do a thing because it's good for my mind. Like it clears my head that that exercise don't work like that for me. Exercise is a thing I have to get through like <laughs> eating a fucking raw vegetable, which I never do or church. You know, it's not like something to be fucking celebrated. It's not like I'm alive. I, I do enjoy that time because I spend a lot of that time writing in an effort to not think about how badly it sucks to, you know fucking be going up a hill and sweating um i just fill that with like you know what will jay and silent bob do next or whatever (laughs) but um you know jennifer don't have that luxury for for a little while so i am uh i'm i'm I'm, uh i'm here i'm like loki bitch i'm just i'm holding all the threads together (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sitting on a throne not really um 
trying to hold the fort down and shit. So that's what's happening in my personal life. That being said, um, my wife afforded me the opportunity to go see the Marvels this week. So outstanding. Yes. She was she had some coverage. So I was like, Ching, and I went to see them. Um, so that's where what's going on in in my my life. Uh just for the folks who are like, hey man, are you gonna but wait? Uh, like I had to cancel Zach and Mary's screening last week that was supposed to happen at Smog Castle. Um, I'm supposed to be going out for for Smokshin December 2nd. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Um, so I think we're gonna have to move that into January. So if you're looking at those events, like uh, I'm, I'm pretty much going to be Los Angeles based for, for the next month until we get Jen to a walk in place. Mm. Um, do what you got to do. Yeah. Anyway, how about you? Uh, not nearly as eventful. I have not moved into or out of any place. Um, I have not had to minister to anybody uh, who needs intensive care. I've uh, I've just been working. I've just been writing. I've just been. I got some comic book shit that I owe. Um, I'm we're we're in the like proofing of colors and letters phase on the Mace Windu book, which is always fun. Where I just cut half of what I wrote because I don't need it anymore. For those who are like Mace Windu book, Mark's working on fucking Star Wars. I am. They find they for called who, me for Marvel or Dark Horse. Marvel for Marvel. Look at that shit. Not only is he working on Star Wars, he's working for Marvel on Star Wars. Look at that. Every now and again. Um, you, are, you are a walking, talking Disney Plus, my friend. That's what you <laughs> uh, Yeah, which I'm now paying more for than I used to. Because um, we all are for everything. Um, but yeah, man, that's been about it. And, you know, Hollywood is kind of gearing back up to life. You know, kind of getting back up to speed. So some projects that had lain dormant for uh, for six months or so that are now kind of have some life again. Contracts are being drawn up and papers being signed. So th- those are all good things, man. All good things. Fucking I. Yeah, Fuck we're back to, we're back to work, kids. The as you know, like we'll probably talk about it in the news, but the writer strike uh ended first and now the SAG strike is over as well. Indeed. Well, potentially, but that is also <laughs> a thing to talk about. They have yet yeah, to ratify. Indeed. Um, but before we get into the meat of the hour slash two hours slash three hours slash however long you have until the the bell goes off in the in the upstairs chambers requiring your presence, I've been listening. I've got like <laughs> periodically I'll be looking to my left just to see if the cell phone has lit up with a. Would you stop fucking talking about movies you had nothing to do with and minister to my sick? <laughs> <laughs> Would you punch my ass for me, please? I mean, sure. Yeah, it's what we're here for. Okay. Um, we should uh, we should pay some bills, yeah. Hell yeah, kids! This here episode of Fat Man Beyond, where we talk about getting old and busting hips and shit like that, uh, is sponsored by the good folks at Fume. Fume, man, I'm gonna send you there right now. Go to uh, Fume. Uh, head to tryfume.com as I read you some fucking copy. T R Y F U M dot com and use the code Fat Man mm-hmm. to save 10% off when you get the uh, Journey Pack today. Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and a new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habits, man. That's tryfume, T R Y F U M dot com and use code Fat Man to save an additional 10% on your order today man be smart don't start kick the habit and put it out before it puts you out man all phrases we've heard a hundred times yet we still continue to do bad habits um yeah true yeah you know like it's i i'm reminded of that uh there's a great john mulaney bit where he talks about watching ice tea on on uh special victims unit just rattle off things that are bad for you. It's like it's like betting on the ponies. It's like when you eat too much and you make yourself vomit. It's like it's like when you when you scratch too many lottery tickets. It's just like yeah, like anything that's bad for you that you want to try and stop, any habit you want to get rid of, try fume. It'll help. Our sponsor fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit 
for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It is a non-electronic device designed to transform your addictive habits. Yeah, I got one here. They gave me one. They sent me one too, but I've been moving <laughs> last year. back and forth. Yeah, I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, there's no batteries in here. There's no button to press up. There's no lighty lights. It is just a little cartridge that you put stuff in, inhale it. I got all these flavors here. I got raspberry lemon. I got orange vanilla. I got maple pepper. I got crisp mint. These are not condoms. I swear they look like them. Sparkling grapefruit, white cranberry. Can there you it is. Hit? I, I I'm not hitting it. Oh. I haven't hit it yet. Is it? Is it? To hit a bowl? Uh, sure. I'll open one. Yeah, try it. Like, do it. Do it. Do. It. Little guys here. Ooh, smells good. The it's story that I. I've probably told it before, but I always heard the story of when the RZA met um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, he was like, what do you do? And Leonardo DiCaprio was like, I'm an actor. And the RZA reportedly said, do it. <laughs> favorite stories. I hope it's fucking true. Um, do it. Do it. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Fucking act. <laughs> an actor. Do it. <laughs> Soliloquy, motherfucker. There's there's this amazing um, clip. I think it's from the Graham Norton show, maybe, mm. um, where he he asks like Judy Dench, who's like just a guest on the couch and is like the greatest living Shakespearean actor, or whatever. He's like, do me some Shakespeare. He's like, what what, what, what do you want? It's like I don't know. Just, just fucking Shakespeare me. She's like, how about a sonnet? And she launches in to like whatever forty lines of a Shakespearean sonnet. That's beautiful and gorgeous and moving and deep and all the things. And the other two guests are like, is this magic? Like, I didn't expect that this would happen today, but I've never seen somebody say, do it. And then they do it. Like, yeah. oh, shit. She did it. Anyway, anyway, uh, instead of pods filled with potentially harmful, harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Fume's new version 2 model is snappy and tactile with an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap. Your fingers, fingers will always have something to do. Look at that shit, man. Indeed. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy and even enjoyable. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who successfully switched when other solutions just don't work. So head to tryfume.com and use code FATMAN at checkout to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version 2 Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfum.com and use code FATMAN to save an additional 10% off your order today. Thanks to the good folks at Fume for sponsoring this episode. We thank the good folks at Fume. Go to tryfum.com, kids right now show them your appreciation they're sponsoring the show indeed um all right yeah let me get rid of this copy <laughs> Bye -bye. um let's talk uh let's talk about loki first okay loki came to an end they did six episodes for the first five i was like yeah I mean, he's great. I'll watch him do anything, and and I'll watch this. But you know, it felt very like, oh my god, like it's it seems like it's the same story all over again, or whatever. And then, oh my god, episode six was like beautiful, stuck the landing, and wound up for me being like one of the most powerful arcs character arcs in in the marvel universe um is it, marvel it, from marvel studios with a beautiful haunting fucking image imagery uh at the end in the third act stunning reversal for me where i'm like fuck it felt like for most of the time i'm like i don't know if i'll remember any of this and i will never forget um how Loki ends. Uh, I, you know, I, we're on spoilers, right? Mm -hmm. Holy fuck, man. Him 
you know, holding all those, uh, all the the time. What are the timelines? The the branches, branches, and then turning it into a fucking tree. The world tree. Own. The guy Ibrazil. was introduced. You know, when when he's like, I'm Loki of Asgard, and I'm what burdened, is it? Burdened, burdened with glorious purpose. Glorious purpose, and the motherfucker looking for a throne from the beginning and shit. To you know that wasn't the plan from the jump. This mm -hmm. just shows you, like in comics, how a series of writers will touch a character and the character gets better and better and richer and deeper. Um they they found a way to make the Loki story matter, you know, and we got to see this guy's whole arc. Like, I, you know, oftentimes when an artist dies, I'll say to my wife, like, wow, we got to see their entire career. What an honor. Um, it's sad because that usually means that, you know, the artist that passed is not very old, right? If you're seeing their entire career. Mm -hmm. But we're getting old. My wife shattered her fucking hip, as just reported. So, yes, we're getting old. <laughs> so, could be, you know, that maybe we're, I don't know, people, we're just seeing more of people's careers come to a close because the people who were famous when we were kids are now in their seventies, eighties and mm -hmm. checking out or whatever the fuck. But we got to see Loki's entire career and in, in, you know, Marvel studio world, obviously in comics, it's a whole different affair. And what they did with that character was, was insanely satisfying and beautiful. Like what a, you know, oftentimes in comics, you'll take a fucking beloved, you know, villain and turn him into an anti-hero like Wolverine or Lobo or, you know, so forth and such like. They they did it successfully, I thought, with Loki and and hit an ending that to me was like, oh, my God, this is one of the best things I've ever seen in in, in, the, in 15 years or whatever the fuck of Marvel making stuff. <laughs> telling you i'm never gonna forget the ending of that it was really fucking beautiful i had to watch it twice just the ending to be like did they really just fucking do that and i know like you know everyone's like he's the god of stories you fucking idiot but i'm like i get that but nobody you tell me you saw that coming like <laughs> oh, I, you know but it, by episode five i guess you could start to see the hints of it but i i thought it was in, incredibly bittersweet just great writing, wonderful direction because visually stunning. Watching him fucking gather all those branches and fucking in the Herculean effort. Him having, you know, they introduced this series, episode one, season one was, um, what was it called? Same title, Glorious Purpose or something. And this episode was also the same title. Hmm. Um, you know, Ourobora, Ouroborosing, the whole fucking thing. Um, it, it, it's so, you know, you're like, oh my God, this guy fucking figured shit out. Like they let this character grow tremendously and still like, you know, got what he always wanted and a throne, but just didn't know what was going to be attached to it. Didn't know that he'd be at the end of time alone. But the moment where he's like, I know what God, what kind of God I would be, I thought was so fucking moving. And I didn't see it coming, man. I honestly thought he was going to fucking kill Sylvie. I'm like, well, <laughs> he'd be, he'd be, he'd be excused at this point. Like he tried fucking centuries of other things, but instead he sacrificed himself. Um, Beautiful, beautiful ending to that, to a story that I thought was like, yeah, it's, it's good. But fuck, man, that ending is great great episode you um i i'd been struggling a little bit a little bit about how to feel about it because I remember when it ended when the finale ended i was like angry at first i was like i because i love what happened to loki i just hated the road we had to take to get there because so much of that road felt like we didn't really need to walk down it you know, like this could have been the seventh episode of season one and ended the exact same way. Um, because it doesn't really start to cook until you're back with He Who Remains and you're back talking about 
you know, who's going to do this? Who's going to who's going to keep control of the universe? Who's going to make sure that the trains run on time? Like they spent five episodes trying to get me to care about a bureaucracy that I just never really did. Um, they tried to get me to care about Victor Timely, and I never really did. Um, you know, I'm always here for Owen Wilson and Mobius, and I love that character, and more I love the two of them together. But it seemed to start to drift away from that, even though you go back and you see him as a jet ski selling, you know, single dad. Um, that was never, it was never the emotional core between him and Loki that I kind of was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but once you're with He Who Remains, once you're with the unsolvable problem of, you know, do you let Sylvie die or do you, like, what happens to the universe? And his solution to that problem is the one that no one ever thought that a Loki would take. Like, that's kind of great. You know, and all of that imagery at the end and all that stuff is kind of, it's echoing and it's haunting. And it's, it's a different heroic finale than he got in Infinity War which is the other time that Loki has gone from villain to hero. Um, you know, it's not the first time we've seen him redeem himself. It's the it's now the second time, but he's now taking the responsibility for others on his shoulders in a way that he hadn't before. Um, I just, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty great. I just, the season itself did not work for me. Um, and so it's hard for a finale to feel like a culmination of a season um in which it it almost had nothing to do with what came before in a way in that it only starts working on when you show up again at the end of time with he who remains talking about branching and multiverses you know and then you have that little coda at the end it's like do the other kings you know know who they are have they have there's have there been any issues with any of the other kang variants like well there was a minor uprising in the 616 but we seem to have the people there have put that down you know like it's it, 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 again like it so much of that felt like it could have been a movie um you know or a a tv movie finale for that first season episode seven is what it felt like mm -hmm. um but you know all that said you know, him on that throne with the world tree behind him you know yggdrasil from the old norse mythology um that's great that's great Mean Dave in chat goes, I hope there's a timeline with a happy Mark who got an episode seven Loki season show only. <laughs> <laughs> it's Earth Earth 212. <laughs> um, what did you think of the uh, ending though? Um, yeah, I mean I, I I dug it. I dug it. Like it it is weird to be thinking about it in 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 relation to the larger multiversal story that Marvel is telling, um, what this means for a potential Kang Dynasty movie, um, which there was there were some reports that came out this week that there may or may not actually be a Kang Dynasty movie. There's all of this conversation about do we have to move away from Kang? Is like does the Jonathan Majors of it all? You know, does the fact that Kang never really platformed as a larger bad guy, um, do we even go down that road? Do we just skip the Secret Wars? And the only confirmation of that is that the the writer for the Kang movie, a guy named Jeff Loveness, I think, um, is no longer writing a Kang movie. Um, whether or not he's, he's the guy that wrote Quantum Mania, right? He was a yeah. writer. Yeah. So whether or not that means they've just replaced him with somebody else. Whether that means that they're they're re-examining their commitment to Kang as a villain, um, I don't know. I don't know. But you could watch the end of this of of Loki season two, and be like, well, all right. So they dealt with all the Kangs then. Kangs are fine. We've got it. Kangs are in the corner. They said something about it too at the end. Sorry, I got to get a plug. My computer's done. Um, they said something about it at the end where they were like, put the folder on the desk and they're like, uh, you yeah. know, fucking, he don't know shit. And fucking, there was a some Kang activity in 616 or whatever. Fuck it. And they were talking about quantum mania. Mm -hmm. And I'm you still know. so nerdy that that excited me. I was like, oh, no, what are we talking about? But they seem to have minimized the Kang threat to the place of like, uh, we, he, we won't be hearing from him anytime soon or some such right. thing. 
you know, and also like the way Marvel deals with multiverses is always kind of slapdash, which is even in Loki, all of the variants of Loki are not Tom Hiddleston. They're like, there's Richard E. Grant, there's an alligator, there's Sylvie, there's all of these other Lokis that look nothing like Tom Hiddleston. So you could have a Kang that looks nothing like Jonathan Majors, and it's just another Kang. Just because we saw a stadium full of Kangs in a closing credit, in a credit sting for Quantumania, does not mean that that is how it has to be. Um, there's a version of this whole story where Renslayer is a, is a Kang variant who just didn't know it. Um, and so that if I, if I have to have Bugu and Batha Ra as the villain of my Kang Dynasty movie, twist my arm. Ouch, that would hurt so bad. Um, but yeah, man, I, I feel like Marvel, you have to be reactive and you have to be somewhat nimble. And for as much as an audience like, like us likes it when there's a plan and we love to see a plan come together, Sometimes you've got to pivot. Sometimes you just got to bob and weave. And just because you gave a presentation where you talked about the Kang Dynasty coming in 2025 does not necessarily mean that the Kang Dynasty has to come in 2025. Or at all. Juiced? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not juiced. I don't know what that is. Anyway. Let's keep going. <laughs> people with my problem. Um, fuck, I'm just using a laptop where I got like a breakout box in it. And why ain't this working? Anyway, enough about so it. So Loki. Um, all right, let's move on to the Marvels. Let's move on to the Marvels. Uh, I saw it once. How many times did you see it? I saw it twice. I saw it once opening night, and then I went again with my wife yesterday. Um, and like, I, I, as I, as I, as I've said on the internet, um, I had a shit ton of fun watching this movie. It is light on its feet when it, when it's funny, it's very, very funny. Like I, I'm trying to remember the last time I laughed as frequently as I did at a Marvel movie. Maybe Ragnarok comes close. Um, you know, I think the three leads are incredibly engaging and when they're together, it's super fun. I think this version of Nick Fury is the version that I like the best. Um, the Secret Invasion Nick Fury was uh, was not my cup of tea. Um, so much so that I didn't finish Secret Invasion. Um, do we still have a Kev? Did you drop out? Oh, there he is. I had to switch over. Ah, and he's back. Um, like... The movie's got some problems, you know, like the villain story is a little weak. Um, the way they kind of platform that story is kind of ineffective. You know, she's, I suppose, an interesting, I haven't seen her in anything else before. I don't think she had that much to work with other than to like be British. And that is villainy <laughs> more often than not in this universe. That's Tom Hiddleston's wife in real life, right? Yeah, yeah, Zewi Ashton, I think her name How is. Wild to be able to be like, you know, what did you do at Marvel today? <laughs> oh, I did this. You know, but the, this movie makes it takes some really big swings that, for my money, paid off. Like the planet where the language is song, and everybody dances. I thought was incredibly charming and super fun, and was on screen for about as much time as you could sustain that joke. Spoilers, the fucking cat shit on the Saber Station was inspired, like, to the point where, like, you're playing memories underneath it, and that's the, come on, guys, this is great. Mm -hmm. Every time Iman Vellani is on the screen, like, it just, it comes to life. Like, she's great. She's, she's just, she's nothing but energy and joy. And even when she's got to go sad, and even when she's got to go a little bit dark, all of that shit still plays. Brie Larson is having a good time. Tanner Paris is having a great time. Um, I like, yeah. There's things I could complain about. There's things I just did complain about. You know, the 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 way they try to play the origin story of what happens on the Cree homeworld for suspense feels like a misdirect to me. Like, open the movie with what happened. Open the movie with Captain Marvel going back to the Kree homeworld, killing the Supreme Intelligence, and somehow creating an environmental disaster. There's nothing to be gained 
by making it a surprise later on. You know, and so then we can understand why she feels responsible for other planets out there. She, we can understand why she felt she had to atone before she could go home and meet Monica Rambeau for the first, well, not for the first time, but to, to return to that family. You know, like she had to earn it. And why? Because we saw what she did. We saw what might be generously considered a war crime <laughs> that she's trying to, to, to make amends for. So we understand that stuff. Um, you know what it reminds me of a little, not the old movie, but that aspect. <laughs> Remember Cosmic Odyssey? Yeah, vaguely. DC Comics. It was what Jim Starlin, I think, but it was mm. by um, was it Mignola? Wow, yeah, I think it was Mignola drew it. If I remember correctly, I'm so I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. But uh, in that, they team up, you know, to fucking stop Dark Side yet again. And um, at one point, uh, who is it? It's um, John Stewart, Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. And I think, is he teamed with the Martian Manhunter, if I can remember correctly? Um, you know, they go to some fucking place, some part of the galaxy where they're to protect this planet. And John Stewart, the Green Lantern, you know, he's got the fucking ring as we... I might explain Green Lantern to this audience. <laughs> Think of it. He was, you know, he's like, I got this. Are you kidding me? The fucking ring bends to my will. Like, I could do anything with this ring. And they get to the planet, and, and it's like ticking down. There's a giant bomb that's ticking down or whatever. And he's like, oh, my God, we can get there at the last second. It won't fucking matter because I got the ring. And then uh, he shows up. And the bomb is yellow. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, the Green Lantern ring is powerless against fucking yellow. Because of that, the entire fucking planet is destroyed. And he has to carry that. I think they took it through in some later storylines. But it was mm -hmm. it was, was kind of deep. So that aspect of, of the Marvels reminded me of like, oh, fucking, that was a story that, that impacted me when I was a kid. Not saying yeah. that, I'm just saying. Right. The idea of like you're a space hero who unwittingly causes the 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 deaths and uh, and destruction of a lot that you didn't intend to accidentally. As people are pointing out in, in chat, that led to the mosaic spin-off. Remember mm -hmm. Green Lantern Mosaic. That's right. That's right. Um what about you? I, you know, look, I had a good time. I was so glad it was short. Like, and I'm not because I'm like, fuck Marvel, but just I, I, I like movies under two hours, man. Um, unless you're Endgame, in which case, go nine. But that that's the thing. This is not Endgame. This no. reminded me of like the Ant Man movies. Fun, you know, mm -hmm. um, a good time. The charming cast. I, I, I like Brie. I like, um, um, was Tayona? Tayona Paris, yeah. I mean, she was awesome in fucking. I mean, we I've liked her, of course, as my grandma, but she was awesome in the clone Tyrone. Did you see that? Not yet. It's on my list. She was also in Mad Men back in the day, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I like her and Iman Villani is that her name? Mm -hmm. Charm fucking city. She was. We loved the you know Ms. Marvel series and stuff, and. uh so watching her play fangirl in this movie was everything. I thought it was an odd choice though that Carol was very short with her and and like mm -hmm. like irritated by her, it seemed like. And she apologized later, but I don't know. I just, I just not the approach I would take it, but not not a criticism where I'm like, that ruined the movie. I just thought, like, you know what? Here, I'm a guy who deals with fans. I would never be that fucking chilly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking hardcore fan where you're like bro it's like she's also super powered too it's like mm -hmm. anyway um you know the villain kind of they didn't really give the villain much to do other than fucking hold that stick again and shit which i'm like wait a second why does it have any power yeah <laughs> like is, are the infinity stones back and like um 
But um, you know, there was it was there was enjoyable stuff. Totally, what a movie should be. Um, in terms of like, hey, we went to another planet, we escaped. Um, the problem is, I, you know, well, we clearly have entered an era of superhero fatigue. Not to mention the fact that everyone's like, hey, man, the first Captain Marvel made a billion point two dollars. Um, I always thought, and I, I ain't against the other two Marvels or whatever the fuck, but I always thought it was weird that your sequel to the billion point two grossing, you know, movie was not called like Captain Marvel two or Captain Marvel, the Marvels. Like it just, I, I know I'm not saying this is why it didn't do as well, but if it were like me, I'd have kept Cap Marvel in the fucking title. Um, again, not, I'm not saying, and that's why things didn't work out for him, but I always thought that was a weird, not to say like it was weird to include the other two. That was great, but you're sequelizing a movie with brand name recognition that made over a billion dollars. Like dropping half of your title, I, it just seemed weird to me early on, but I was like, I'm sure they know what they're doing. And again, yeah. I don't think that's the reason everything went south, but I don't think it fucking helped. I think Captain Marvel happened between two Avengers movies. Like, you know, when we were fucking starved. Do you remember after Infinity War when you watched everyone fucking, like, dust off and you were like, what the fuck? And then Nick Fury's pager had the Captain Marvel symbol mm -hmm. on. And you were like, she'll know what to do. You know, that, that movie was insanely well positioned. And I'm not saying that's the only reason it made money, but it's like, you put it between... Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame and stuff and you're like this, this is character's going to play a big role. Uh, you know, I I think it was always going to be a daunting task to revisit that same number. No, no matter how good or bad the movie is, I just think that was at a period of time when like they could have they could have put out Thor Dark World 2 in that slot and it would have fucking did better than it did am i crazy or no no i think there was there was definitely some inertia there was momentum that that in the same way that when i think it was iron man 3 came out after the avengers and it had like the avengers one and it also made like 1.2 or 3 billion dollars for ant for iron man 3 and it's because it had like the halo effect it was the oh it's like avengers 1.5 it's like, I want more of this. This is the thing that gives me more of it. Great. Um, you know, I think Captain Marvel was sold incredibly well. You know, the ad campaign for that movie. And it also came at a time when people were hungering for, for female superheroes. And, like, women showed up to go see that movie. Because the ad campaign was little girls standing up for herself. Remember that that montage that they had of like Carol Danvers as a kid in a go-kart, you know, accident, she stands up and then Carol Danvers as a pilot who gets out of an accident, she stands up and it's Captain Marvel as a hero and she stands up and the tagline was like, it takes her and then they put the O at the end of her to make hero and it's like, it was, it was the thing that you go to a studio for, which is the marketing muscle. That can that can spread the word and can spread it well, and the ad campaign for Ms. Marvel or the Marvels was never that good. It never was. It never found a way to get you to care, and it started to feel desperate to the point when the the final trailer, half of it was from Endgame, half of it was like, remember what heroes were? Remember the last time you saw heroes? And here's Captain America, and here's Tony Stark, and here's Nick Fury, and here's it's like it just felt like they were running away from the movie. And, you know, listen, again, I'm not saying it's a great movie. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time at it. Um, but I think it, it suffers from a lot of market conditions that did not help very well. It suffers from Bam. two out of the three characters having been introduced on television, on Disney+. Plus, You know, and having you to have to remember that or have seen that to know who Monica Rambeau is or to know who Ms. Marvel is. Ms. Marvel, like the lowest rated Marvel Disney Plus show, is the way that you got into that character. And so to expect there to be any crossover there doesn't really hold. Uh-oh. Uh, um, I, I was just going to say, you also don't have Brie Larson 
talking on any talk shows because of a SAG strike. You don't have the other actors on Nickelodeon talking about it or whatever kids watch, you know. Can you imagine, like, if you're, you had, um, and I haven't watched any of it because all I do is dad and run a bar, but, like, if you had all of those people out there on the talk show circuit and on all of those different things talking about how fun this movie would be to bring your daughter to. Like, does that get me off of watching Spidey and his amazing friends and I take my daughter to see the Marvels instead? Uh, maybe. But you didn't have any star power pushing the movie. All you had was editors at home cutting endgame footage into. So that could be a big... It, it, maybe not a big part of it, but certainly has to play into it. Let's say... You know, in like that promotion, if they were able to go out and promote it like actors normally do, that, you know, for some fucking reason, it doubled what they made this weekend, which was what, 47 million? Yeah. So that would be 94 million. Still wouldn't be as much as the first Cap Marvel made. And it would still be getting attacked, I would imagine, by a bunch of folks um yeah. dave in chat pointed out wisely that marvel's uh still was number one at the box office this weekend you know for as much as everyone's like oh shit it was the number one movie this week and set a record for a female black director says mean dave mm -hmm. absolutely right about that yeah i mean it just it, it seems like there's i mean the online discussion about this movie has been a little bit all over the place um you know it seems like this movie is the equivalent of the t-shirt in Almost Famous. Do you remember that scene where they get the band t-shirt and every face on it is blurry? And Jason Lee is like, no, man, look, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. And Billy Crudup is like, no, this t-shirt lets you say everything you've ever wanted to say. Your looks are becoming a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was the front man. You were the guitarist with Mystique. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like there are people who were like, you know, this is what happens when you give a director, you know, a second time director an, an incredible raise or whatever. Like, you know, she only had one other movie under her belt, which is also a lie. But like, she didn't earn it. And she only got it because she's a black woman and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no. This Still is water. Still water CD. I just, I, as I was unpacking, I came across it. It's Jason Lee gave it to me. If you're an almost <laughs> famous fan, it's got almost fan. Fever Dog. Lo it's got every fucking track they ever recorded and shit. That's what, awesome. Peter Frampton did it or something? Uh, no, it was one of the God, I can't remember, it was one of the women from Heart. Nancy Wilson, I think. Uh, no, Peter Frampton. Well, Jason Lee said he went to rock and roll camp with Peter Frampton. He was the he was the guy. Yeah, but like yeah. I think Nancy Wilson co-wrote. She, well, she was married song. to Cameron. Cameron, and she wrote those songs. Did um, she? Yeah. Peter, Peter Frampton was the music the rock and roll guy who coached the band though jen jen is too almost famous as i am to star wars so i get oh. <laughs> yeah I, by by default uh yes you're both right that's right isn't that it's just, why can't why can't why can't why can't the internet be like that mark <laughs> we're both right everybody's right nobody here is wrong yeah it's like and and the more i remember that i guess the better it, it would be I, I it's just so yeah you know and also like there's the the narrative around marvel has been waiting for the thing to poke at you know and and whether that narrative is earned or not you know that's that that is up for debate you know did i like ant-man 3 no did i love loki no you know, are there are there movies of the recent, you know, whatever phase we're in, phase four or five, that did not work for me? Sure. Um, are they at some something of an inflection point with where they're going and where they've been? And should they have, as to your point, taken a break after Endgame and let us live with an ending for a little while? You know, that was never going to happen because, again, once you buy a studio for $6 billion, you're going to squeeze every last dime out of that studio, even if the story is asking for it to end. All of those things are true. 
you know, is the Marvels the reason for any of it? No. Is it is it a symptom of any of it? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I think it's a relatively well-made movie with a bunch of, of actors who performed very well. Um, will it make money if it costs $220 million and only made 110 global in its opening weekend? Probably not. You know, it'll tap out at $300 million and, and then do what a Disney movie or a Marvel movie will do, which is play on TNT and TBS and USA from here until the end of time. And we'll be fine. Um, is there an audience who perhaps was trained that they can see Marvel movies on Disney Plus a month or two after release? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. There's, there's, there's a lot of theories about why it didn't work. Um, nobody knows for sure other than the gender split and the audience was not in its favor in that most of the people who went to see it were men. Um, I think only 35% of the audience was female. Um, so they did not even get the audience that they should have been able to count on. What do you think that's about? I think some of it is bad marketing. I think some of it is they just did not speak to that audience. They they didn't find a way to make it necessary the way that Wonder Woman was necessary, the way that the first Captain Marvel was necessary and important. Um, I don't know why. The way that Black Panther was important. You know, and granted, sometimes you can you can create and you can foment that kind of passion, um, and sometimes you can't. But all of those other movies existed at a place at a time where that was an answer to a question, which is why are there no superhero movies about women? Like Wonder Woman is one of your holy trinity, and you've got all these other movies, you don't have Wonder Woman, and then you give people Wonder Woman, and it's pretty good. You know, there's been 19 Marvel movies. And it took you this long to get one about a female superhero and it's captain marvel and i don't even like captain marvel that much but i see the answer and the question that it was answering and so i get it um so yeah i don't i don't i don't have a crystal ball i don't have a magic theory um i just know that it's it probably deserved better than it got and i think that some of the reasons why it got it have nothing to do with its relative quality um it's uh it also just you know again when captain marvel came out it was like oh my god fucking th 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 this will have clues about endgame like it's all feeding into like endgame this movie didn't feel like it was feeding into anything no. other than itself standalone story which should be absolutely fine for a movie to stand alone and it does and i i think it works i know a lot of people don't like it and shit I've seen a lot of hyperbole online. <laughs> like, worst movie ever made. And I don't feel that by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it, you know, I don't, I, it's, I, I think this, they put this movie into production at a time when I think they were like, we could do anything. Mm hmm they'll come see anything like this movie was in put into production pre COVID. Right. I think so. Yeah. Like they started that. It feels like it's very late. I mean, this was supposed to happen before secret invasion. This following secret invasion is weird because Nick Fury is so dour in secret invasion <laughs> here. He's just like, you know, having a good time. Um, so scheduling COVID affected it and whatnot. And you know, what are you going to do? They spent $200 million. It said making the movie. I read an article. So it's not like, you know, they can back girl it or something like that. I'm sure they didn't think it was like, you know, I, it, from what I've read online, um, based on, you know, the that book that you read. the yeah, the MCU. They were shocked by quantum mania. Over yeah. They were like, what do you mean people don't like it? And this movie was already fucking done, near done. So I think... You know, they shot that post-credit thing. That felt kind of recent. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, you know, they... I I, I, th I think you're probably going to see a lot of... Well, I mean, what's his name? Eisner already said. He's like, hey, man, we're going to rein it in. Quality, not quantity. Yeah. But I think this is definitely going to put that in the overdrive. Um, I think we're going to see the 
plans accelerated. Like you said, I think Kang Dynasty goes away, and I think they're like, we got to get to that reboot movie, man. The one we got to get to Secret War, mm -hmm. so we can yeah. just fucking dump everything and start with a clean slate or whatever the fuck they want to do. And I think that for the most part, the like Marvel Disney Plus experiment um, is kind of over. You know, the idea that you could make things that happen on the TV shows as important as the things that happen in the movies and it all exists as one big story that everybody ingested. It's like, you know. I said Eisner, I meant Iger. Iger. My bad. Yeah. That, that shows you how old I am. <laughs> you know, like I, I just, I, it between between the idea that Kang, who was, you know, introduced in Loki and then went to Quantumania and nobody seemed to care, between these two, you know, Ms. Marvel and 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 Captain Rambo introduced in, you know, Ms. Marvel and WandaVision respectively, um, and then brought into the movies to sort of stand side by side. Like that kind of platforming just is not working for them. You know, and so we don't have that much more TV stuff down the pike. We get what if season two, which apparently is is debuting this December. Um, Ironheart is in the can, uh, pr probably to release sometime next year. Echo is on the way, you know, dropping, I think, you know, the end of this year, the beginning of next. Daredevil, I think, is starting to get back on track with new writers and new directors and all that stuff. But, like, after that, I think that pipeline that had been so huge is, is getting throttled because Igor also said, pull back, too much Marvel. You're diluting the brand by putting so much stuff out there and not enough of it is great. Um, so do half as much. You know, We'll see if there's still going to be a Thunderbolts movie. We'll see if there's still going to be an Armor Wars movie. We'll still see if there's, again, Kang Dynasty seems to be hanging by a thread if it exists. Blade seems to be hanging by a thread if it exists. You know, it's Marvel is in a state of flux. And it's and that is not a, a a pejorative statement at all. Like they are in a time of change where they need to decide who they're going to be, and more importantly, what's the story they're going to tell? Because again, there was no compelling reason to see the Marvels the way there was to go see Captain Marvel, and without it, it's really hard to make this kind of thing work. Yeah, because then you know, I I don't think like. And, you know, a lot of people on, uh, online are like, oh, the problem is they went woke and stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't think that doesn't feel like it to me. I just feel like there was so much content, which admittedly I was like, yay, as much content as possible. Um, forgetting that, like, there's there's one person overseeing it all. And if you stretch that person very thin and all those creative teams thin, you don't have, you know, the storytelling that you had when they were kicking off and they were hungry. I mean, you know, it's been, well, I've been accused of it online for years. Like fucking you're not good anymore. You were good with clerks and now fucking you're older and you suck. And, you know, I don't agree with that, but, <laughs> but I'm not the one buying tickets. I'm the one selling tickets. So, you know, I think they've just, uh, it is a pretty fucking tough act to follow that end game infinity war end game double punch the whole world was invested in thanos and shit like that i just you know i think i think if i was in charge at marvel i'd start making fewer and cheaper movies but that's just me yeah i mean the marvels at 200 million dollars like why like i, mean, I understand it like other worlds and special effects and all that shit and i'm sure the pandemic and blah 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 and for the record man like who's the director nia da costa yeah better filmmaker than me i never could have made the marvels so I, i'm not like saying like oh my god fucking here's where she fucked up you know clearly at this level everyone knows what they're doing and and the movie's not poorly directed. No, some of the action scenes. Does somebody some that, know what to do with the camera? Clearly, the director yeah. knows what to do with the camera. Yeah, I mean, some of the action scenes, some of that fight choreography is as good as I've seen it in Marvel outside of a Captain America movie. Like, when they went hard. Like, they turned Captain America into an MMA superhero. Um, 
which is great. Windows, man, remember the first time you saw him in Winter Soldier and he's fucking booking, yeah, through the boat when he lands, when he jumps out, and fucking lands, and and it's like, oh my god, they've redefined this guy. Yeah, when he's when he's taking on Batroc the Leaper, he like takes his helmet off and puts the shield down, and it's like, yeah, all right, let's fucking fight, and they fight, and they like that stuff is great. This had a lot of inventiveness to it. You know, that first fight scene when they're in the the uh, the Khan household and like bouncing in and out these characters and through ceilings and roofs and in, like it was great. Like I, I had a blast with it. But to your point, it's not her fault. Um, I don't think it's anybody's fault. I think it's it's this this was going to be it was either going to be one or another one just like it that that the momentum caught up with it. Or the lack of momentum caught up with it. And I was like, well. Do you think um, they ever get the magic back? Or is it like comics? Like, it's it's odd, but this kind of happened. This all happened before. It's like, that's what you're to This all happened before. It will all happen mm-hmm. again. Like, in comics. Like in the '90s and the aughts, with fo- foil covers and fucking like the Marvel universe stable of characters was massive, and Claremont's fantastic but impenetrable run on the X Men meant that new people weren't jumping on board. They had like fucking multiple X Men titles and shit like that. You know, it just it's 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 like you can see like this. There are there's a blueprint. Mm-hmm. And I know that, like in the movies, they they like the comics for the characters and the or- and origins, but then they like to do their own stories and stuff. But you know, it, what is that called? A, a narrative cul-de-sac when yeah. you just enter it and like, you know, it's uh, I I got powers. This person's mad at me. Uh, we're gonna fight, and I'm a hero. Like you know. Yeah certain point you're just telling that similar story mm-hmm. over and over again and they did that in in comics as well now in comics you can go way more in way many more directions because it's not as expensive as a movie it's not 200 million dollars to do an issue of fucking captain marvel or something like that but you know I, I'm not saying like superheroes have run their fucking course, but like the general public seems to get it. Yeah. You know, and I think when it was on the rise, when we were all buying in and all of that momentum and goodwill and inertia, like, what are we doing? We're building to this. We're building to this. How does this fit into this piece? Oh my God, we're building a giant fucking, you know, Katamari Damacy of story and it's awesome. And then once you get to the top of the mountain, you're like, great, we did it. Can we all go home now? It's like, no. There's another eight things you have to watch, and we're going to climb another mountain, which we haven't told you what it is or where it is or what's at the top of it, but we're climbing that mountain, so come along with us. And you're like, okay. You know, it's like in the comics, like Wolverine was the star of like seven different Marvel comics at one point because he was the one that worked. You know, he was the hero that people liked, and then suddenly you're just like, how much Wolverine can I take? How many X-Men titles can I buy? You know, what, what is it giving me back? for my investment in it. And I feel like we're at the point where the 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 continuity of it, the connected universe of Marvel that had been such a boon has become a burden. And I think that the Marvels is when nobody wanted to do the homework. Kostov20 in chat says, Marvels has similar problems with Love and Thunder and Quantumania. It feels rewritten and reshot ad infinitum. And it kind of messes up things it does well or should be doing well. Fun, but incoherent. I wish I was really smart about movies. Says a guy <laughs> has made his living in movies for the last 30 years. Um, but, I, I, you know, I can't express myself like that. You know, I mean, I don't I don't know if I still inco- I, I, as much as I'm a filmmaker, I still remain a movie fan. And as much <laughs> as I make movies for a living, I part of my brain refuses to believe that and I still behave <laughs> like a member of the audience and I'm not I don't have a high bar you know like it's it's not like man you really gotta fucking tell an original story to satisfy me I, I'm oddly 
sated by fucking the same ridiculous superhero story over and over again. And I've said many times why that is. And that's because I love the idea of a story where when the worst thing in the world is happening and everybody's running from it, one or the small band of colorfully dressed folks are running at it. That's like, I'll, I'll read, I'll watch that story, read that story over and over again. I'm a sucker for it and stuff. Doesn't mean I don't like other things, but that's my comfort food. Like, I love that kind of story. Um, but could be that like, you know, I've been, I've been enjoying that story for the better part of 50 years, mm -hmm. comic book form. And now, you know, I got to see it all again on the big screen. Could be that the general public that like jumped in for like the excitement of building to Thanos and Endgame, like once they got to Endgame, they were like, all right, well, like the same way that you watch a Netflix show and you're like, I did it all. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to do something else. You know, and I think there'll always be an audience. I just think that audience is, you know, they're going to be a lot more selective. They used to go to everything. And now it's like, you better give them something they've never seen before. And the problem is most of these stories is something one has seen before. That's yeah. why Winter Soldier was such a breath of fresh air because you're like, well, it's a superhero movie, but it's not. It's a comic book movie, but it's 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 kind of like you know three days of the Condor or something like that. So when they genre genre mashed, I I think the results were thrilling, you know, because then you didn't know what fucking movie you were necessarily getting, and it wasn't following what you assumed it would be. Their sequels didn't necessarily feel like sequels; it just felt like ongoing chapters in a story. Um, I don't know. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. I think that that when when they used to be kind of, you know, we're doing Star Wars with Guardians, and we're doing a heist movie with Ant Man, and we're doing political thrills in the Parallax for you with Captain America. Like those were all different speeds. Like we were doing the airbrush side of a van with Thor Ragnarok. Um, all of that stuff felt somewhat unique and somewhat different, but they all had a, a pull to them because they knew they were building towards something. Now these movies all feel like superhero movies when they all didn't before, you know. And you know, again, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. We are just armchair detectiving what what the issue is. Um, is there some fatigue? Maybe. Is there a course correction coming from Marvel? Probably, you know. But it is it is sad that the Marvels had to be the one that uh, that took the the brunt of it. That they were the first through the door of an audience not just being willing to go see everything um yeah and and maybe there maybe it's there's i don't know there's a shift it ain't just marvel you know i know this is what we're talking about because mm -hmm. okay the marvels just came out and there was that article a few weeks ago and whatnot but it's like you know dc saw some little traction this year you know superhero fatigue is is a real thing not for me i like mm -hmm. that story, but seems like for the general public so if i was gonna do anything to fix it if i was in charge i would just be like let's make less and make them cheaper yeah you know i mean nobody says that there's horror fatigue even though not every horror movie is great not every horror movie is even good but they're cheap enough <laughs> and even if they're bad they make their budgets back by and large and so we'll take seven or eight of them a year because a they're all different stories for the most part even if they're all slasher movies they're all different kinds of slashers and b they scratch an itch the the inherently human like ganglion basal dna in in everybody that likes to be scared and so they give us that thing you know what what's the thing that superhero movies do for us you know do do they give us hope do they allow us to believe you know then the movies that we make that want to vector on that kind of pleasure center ought to do that too and if they're cheaper you can swing harder on the ones that are just weirder um Uh, there was another comic book movie that came out this week, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, Me neither. The Fincher movie. The Killer. The Killer. Yeah, it's based on, what, a French comic book, right? Yeah. 
of the same title. Fast Bender, fucking Magneto and shit. Mm, fassy. I gotta watch that. I've been. Yeah. Uh, we. I guess we're done talking about the Marvels. Done and... talking about the Marvels. Um, but while we're talking briefly about Netflix, um, I have been shouting from the top of every hill I can find that Blue Eye Samurai on Netflix is maybe the best TV show I've seen all year. Um, it is written and created by Michael Green, he of uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine and Logan. Um, and his wife, Amber Noizumi, I think is how you pronounce her name. It is the most beautiful animated show I've seen in uh, quite a while. The writing is so fucking sharp and tight and built on character, 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 that it's, it's annoying how well done it is because it makes it difficult to want to go and write things for yourself once you see somebody do it so well. Um, it's violent as fuck. It's sexy as fuck. Um, it's tragic as hell. Um, all of the voice work is is through the roof, top notch. They spent money on this motherfucker. It looks, it reminds me of Arcane, which was another um, Netflix animated show where, you know, every animator that I knew looked at it with envy because nobody could spend that much money, but they had video game money, so they spent it. Um, Blue Eye Samurai was a, we're just going to take forever to do it. We're going to take five years to make this show. And it's going to look like we spent every one of those five years drawing. Um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. You know, it is it is for sure going to be on my end of the year top ten list. Um, I'm looking for an excuse to watch it again, um, but it's it's phenomenal. Uh, Jen would like it quite a bit. Is that right? It is. I think she'd dig uh, it the most. Bobby to pop breaks, and someone named um cz vegas wrote literally the exact same thing so even they either they copy and pasted it from some or they're running two accounts but they said how come the boys and gen v are doing so well if it was fatigue it is not fatigue it is good writing and stories female leads and lgbt characters and no one cares because the show is well written i guess he's talking about gen v mm -hmm. um yeah but but these are apples and oranges like gen v is not competing at the box office like like the marvels which is what we were talking about um right. and also like we don't know the numbers on gen v or the boys so mm -hmm. you know for all you know Fucking fewer people watch it than saw the Marvels. We we have no fucking criteria. Just because you've seen it and some of your friends have seen it doesn't mean the whole world has seen it. But also, nobody's like, why is the internet like that? It's just like, <laughs> what you said, it's what I say. And it's like, I, I didn't say that we had the fucking answer, but nobody's... Yeah, I get it. Yes, if these things were better written and shit but like at the same time you know marvel had a brand that was almost fucking bulletproof like everyone just went because it was fucking marvel mm -hmm. just talking about what happened there uh, but i look forward to watching gen v i love the boys um yeah i haven't I seen gen v. you haven't watched it yet i haven't watched it. i haven't watched it i haven't watched invincible yeah I haven't watched Invincible season two. I loved Invincible season one. Oh, yeah, one is great. Like I haven't seen season two yet. Um, I watched The Crown, <laughs> the new season of The Crown, which I'm sure this whole audience is like, "Fuck yeah, <laughs> Diana!" What else did I watch? <laughs> I watched um, the new Emma Stone Nathan Fielder show. You know, The Curse. So fucked up. Yeah, I've heard. I haven't seen it yet is is you you've not seen anything else like it that's for sure <laughs> um seems to be like a meditation on on uh not just like fucking you know those home improvement hgtv but like you know fake altruism or something like that but it is well done and there's a moment in it where Fucking dude whips out the smallest cock you've ever seen. That <laughs> and I was like, that's how you make a first episode. That's where we went wrong on Masters of the Universe fucking 
revelation, Mark. We should have opened the first episode with a tiny cock. You got to hang down, man. If you're not hanging down, I don't know what you're doing. Hang a tiny one. That gets people talking. (laughs) Whole nation's talking about this fucking dong. Um, Yeah, I watched that. What else did I watch? Started watching Murder at the End of the World, but I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna like Jennifer has been so appreciative that I've been spending so much time with her. She's like, we can watch something that you want to watch, and I, I think it, I, I don't know if I need to be like, let's watch the boys and then watch Gen V, or can I just take a right to Gen V? Um, I mean, that is also a. We can watch what you want to watch. No, we can't. Yeah. (laughs) That's actually not true at all. You know what I'd like to watch now? I'd like to watch Virgin River, a very quiet show about people living in a small Midwestern town. Um, RPM in chat said something interesting. Marvel banked on infinite growth, and that's not sustainable. Of the top 10 most expensive films of all time, three of them are Avengers flicks. Yeah. Uh Invincible, I do want to watch that. I can't convince her to watch that with me. I don't think she doesn't really go for animation. Um, but I will watch Invincible because I love yeah. season one. And yeah. I, I listen to if watch you, if you watch you should watch a couple of episodes of Blue Eye Samurai and then tell me the Jen wouldn't love it. Done. I'll take your suggestion. And it took me months to fucking <laughs> go for <laughs> Train to Busan or took years. you years. <laughs> years. And then when I finally saw it, I was like, you know what? Mark's he's got a point. He's on to something. <laughs> um all right. Should we do some news? Yeah, I guess we've talked about everything we can talk about. Somebody in chat was like, they didn't talk about the beast. Yeah, we did. It's like one of okay. the first times we talked about. Yeah, before we did the ad, we're talking about beast. Yeah, truly. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's dive into the news, man. Mark used to do fucking news, kids. He was a news hound. And now, these days, well, he left the news behind. Except whenever we're doing Fat Man Beyond, that's when he puts on his press hat with a little card in it and fucking goes back to gather news to give to y'all. And usually it's news that other people have done first, regardless. He's not breaking news, let's be honest. Mark's not out there muck raking and shit like that i am not calling sources i'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not hanging outside of hospitals <laughs> but he did the heavy lifting and pulling a few links to before show so there it is mark's here with the news hit him mark kind of qualifies uh so the 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 news since we last podcasted that has uh shifted the firmament in entertainment the most is that the uh the sag astra actor strike um has officially been called off that's the biggest news bullshit reach your season two fuck trailer <laughs> that's the news my friend dude when he kicks the front of that car in the airbag <laughs> it was like oh yes nicely done Jack, i Rachel. i live in i fully support 100 the reacher verse man the reacher <laughs> oh my god him fucking like just punching through that fucking car pulling that dude out i was like he's back he's back <laughs> Can't wait, Batman without the mask. <laughs> anyway, yes, the SAG strike uh, after the strike finally came to an end, kids. Yes. Um, and it looks like uh, they got a lot of things they wanted, correct? Looks like they got a lot of things they wanted. I don't I don't have the entirety of what they what they got uh, in their negotiations with the with the uh, studios, because a not all of it is public yet. The entire long form of the proposed deal has not been made public, at least to you know me um and so here's here's sort of a bullet list of like six things the actors got that they were looking for um and the thing to remember is that in a negotiation you don't get everything you want you make progress you get you know you you move the dial on the things that you want but maybe that dial doesn't go all the way into the zone you were hoping for what about Um, the writers did the writers get everything we wanted no, there were some things that we also couldn't couldn't really you know push over the hill. We wanted feature screenwriters to get weekly salaries instead of on the sort of installment basis. That didn't happen. We wanted stronger protections on AI. We got okay protections on AI. Same thing with the actors. Um, you know, we wanted more transparency on streaming numbers. Um, we got some transparency on streaming numbers. Um, I think it's always you know a give and a take. 
um, and hopefully you take more than you give. Um, so for the actors, for SAG, their minimum comp compensation increases. Performers will earn a 7% wage increase effective immediately, and then next year it's a 4% increase, and then 2025 it's a 3.5% increase. Background actors, stand-ins, and photo doubles will immediately earn an 11% wage increase, followed by the same 4 and 3.5% increases uh, in, uh, in 2024 and 2025, which is awesome. Everybody gets paid more. Great. Streaming bonuses. The new contract calls for actors to earn a success payment along with the usual residuals if they work on streaming projects that attract a significant number of viewers. The success matrix is determined by the, by, let's see, total number of domestic streaming hours over the first 90 exhibition days divided by the total runtime of the blah, 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 whatever. It's a bonus that you get that you didn't get before if you had a show that did incredibly well on Netflix or Apple TV or whatever. Um... And part of what everybody wants is to share in the success of the work that they do. Um, disclosure on viewership stats. Um, let's see, on high budget streaming productions, streaming producers will be required to disclose the total number of hours the content was streamed, both in the US and, and Canada and abroad for each quarter, so that you can, you can see if you're being compensated compared to the show's distribution and popularity. Here's the big one, limits on artificial intelligence. Film and TV producers must obtain consent from actors to create and use their digital replicas, as well as specify how they intend to use that digital likeness. Actors are entitled to compensation at the usual rate for the number of days they would otherwise have been paid for to do the work being performed by a digital replica. Which is pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. What some actors are hoping for was no digital replicas, no AI, none of it at all, period. But that doesn't seem like a thing that the studios were going to countenance. And so limits instead of a ban. Um, number five, minimum number of background actors. The new labor contract requires that an increased number of background actors be hired on union terms in the West Coast to equal the minimum number in New York. Um, and relocation bonuses. Performers and series who have to relocate for work will be entitled to a maximum relocation benefit of up to $5,000 a month for six months, a 200% increase in the previous amount. All of that sounds great. There's a lot more in there because the actors had some 30 different points that they were trying to negotiate. The writers had eight. And so this is only six of those 30 that had some motion and some movement. Um, what is left to happen is the actors can vote to ratify or reject this deal. Um, when the writers got to vote on their deal, it passed with a 98%, I believe. Um, and... Uh, it is unclear if the entirety of SAG will be as unanimous. Um, there were there were you know twelve thousand members of the WGA. There are one hundred sixty thousand members of SAG, and a body that large doesn't always pull the boat in the same direction. And there's a there's some debate online. If you follow any actors, you've either seen some say I'm voting yes, some say I'm voting no, and here's why. A lot of it is based on the AI stuff. Um, a lot of it is based on some general unhappiness that they didn't get more than they got. Um, I have no stake in this fight other than to say, maybe, I hope we were not premature <laughs> in, in rescheduling productions um, and letting actors go back out and promote their material and, 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 you know, suddenly saying, hey, everybody who was on pause, going back to work. I hope that that was not a, a, uh, a premature work stoppage because if they don't ratify then they go back on strike um man <laughs> this industry needs to go back to work yeah you know and there's all these you know i've seen all these stories about the economic um hole that has been blown into the economy both nationally and uh, and in the state of California because of the work stoppage and it's billions of dollars um, that it's going to take some time to rebuild that it's going to take some time to get everybody back to work and by everybody it's not just actors and writers or directors it's everybody who makes anything that's dependent on movies or TV Bam. it's craft services it's set builders it's VFX artists it's sound designers it's costume designers it's everybody uh, we're down 25% sales at scum from the fact that nobody's been working. 
Wow. And I have heard it is from Santa Barbara to San Jose because the people who would usually vacation in Santa Barbara on the weekends now don't have the money to go on vacation and eat out in Santa Barbara. So bars and restaurants all all up and down Southern California are are down. What I've heard is like, we're down 25%, some 30, 35%. Since wow. since the strike, so it's beyond even just industry; it's trickles out to everything else. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like it's not just you know. Some people online are like, "Oh, fucking actors want more money," or whatever. Fuck, or it, you know, the rich get richer. There are a lot of people in this business. Yours, yours truly as well. Uh, did not get rich making movies. You don't make get rich making Kevin Smith movies. I fucking assure you. Um, and there are a lot of people that make a living making movies, but, you know, don't get rich doing it and stuff. Um, and, and then there are people that have nothing to do with the industry who still count on people in the industry, like all those fucking restaurants around the, you know, the studios and shit must be Mm -hmm. severely. Um, if JC, like JC, at least he's got a bar, so sooner or later people are like you know how i get over this a drink you know and they (laughs) fucking come out and get their drink on and stuff but yeah man it's 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 a lot of folks that are affected by this beyond the obvious and um and it's time for everyone to get back to work yeah like when they say that la is a company town you know the company the business the industry is is movies and tv and it does touch everyone everyone and so the sooner we get the the engine back up and running um the better it will be for everybody um that is not me pressuring any actor to do a thing he doesn't want to do um you have to vote your conscience you have to vote you know with an eye on reality and i and i on hope but you know it's a it's it's hurting lots and lots of people and again we are not hurting lots and lots of people the wga or sag the studios were hurting lots and lots of people by not coming to terms with us far far sooner than they did mean dave's in chat said porn's still doing good though is it though like i know they're you know obviously unaffected by either of those strikes (laughs) i thought like the porn industry wasn't quite like the same as when we were like is vivid still making porn and stuff or is it now just all homemade stuff um i i think like only fans is doing and that's the other thing only fans kind of took the place of a lot of professionally made stuff no yeah i mean i don't i don't know what subscription numbers are like for vivid or 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 hustler or any of those you know merchants and stuff i know that the tube sites like you know whatever you porn or porn hub or whatever it is where you can watch porn for free has uh has taken a little bit of sting out of all right i'm going to give these guys 30 bucks a month to watch porn when i can just watch this over here for nothing mm-hmm. you know the entrepreneurial desire and 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 sort of ingenuity of of performers who go on on only fans like yeah hell yeah it's like patreon for porn like here's the kind of porn that i want i will pay you for it and everybody goes home happy and then gets happier and happier and happier is that what happens at OnlyFans? Yeah. It's not all porn, though. No, no, but it's mostly porn. <laughs> it's like Tyler Posey's on. He ain't doing porn, is he? I mean, I don't know what Tyler Posey's up to. Probably not, but even still, like you're paying a monthly fee for access to a person that you like. And that person will do whatever. Like, I'm going to read you some fucking poetry because I'm Tyler Posey. This is what we're doing. You know, I'm going to just give you, it's like Instagram that you're paying for. With even Instagram started doing, which is you could subscribe to people's, you know, special subscription feed if you wanted to. I saw a uh, story about some teacher who was, had an OnlyFans and like the school found out. And and I guess she was like, fuck, I don't give a shit because she was making like 10 times what she made as a teacher. (laughs) Me and you got to open up an OnlyFans where we just fucking take our shirts off and tease nipples. <laughs> got to be an audience for that, right? Just like, 
We don't want to see penetration, but we like a lot of nipple work between middle age. <laughs> Just fucking hammer those nips, dude. <laughs> what would you pay for that, kids? What's that worth? How much a month? Yeah. <laughs> Some fucking withered acorns worth of nipples and just fucking <laughs> wailing on every goddamn day. Truly. I, I, uh, I, we got to keep up with the kids, Mark. <laughs> hey kids, you want you want to see these nipples? I got them. Yeah, we got to go where the kids fear to go. Middle aged <laughs> men working each other's nipples—they're fucking terrified. <laughs> <laughs> we could corner that market, man. Yeah, what's the name of it? It's Fat Man or Beyond? <laughs> yeah, Beyond Beyond. That's the after. Join us on our Patreon, Fat yeah. Man Beyond Beyond, where me and Fat Mark man. stop talking about Marvel. And start marveling at each other's nipples. <laughs> then yeah, be on After Dark. We could play fucking superhero music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> this week I'm tweaking Mark's nipples to John Williams Superman score. Here we go. Oh, Alan Silvestri. And will cry when I work them nipples as hard as <laughs> uh, the money we can all make. I know, fucking, it's what it seems to be all about. Fucking, we're leaving this money on the table, this nipple money. It's nuts. I know. We're leaving nickels and nickels worth of money on the table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all adds up, then, nickels. You don't know, it can catch on in a freak way. You know, John Oliver talks about it, and suddenly <laughs> people are like, I got to see this. Is that the guy from Clerks? Do <laughs> work now? Oh, let me tell you about Silent Bob's nipples. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what other news we got? Uh, Bag strike essentially <laughs> potentially being over. Fingers yes, crossed. fingers crossed. Um, Warner Brothers uh, has killed and then spared apparently Coyote versus Acme. This is an interesting story because um, first it sounded a lot like the Batgirl story. We we're like, hey, we got a finished movie, but fuck it, we're not going to put it out because it's going to cost too much money for us to put out, and we're just going to take the write off on this movie. And yeah. The filmmaker was heartbroken and a lot of fucking people jumped in as well. Other filmmakers having nothing to do with it to just be like, why would you ever make a movie at Warner Brothers ever again, knowing that they could fucking just shelve it for a tax write off? Yeah. You know, then especially Matt, Matt Zoller sites had a series of tweets, which I really enjoyed where he said like, okay, if they're getting a $30 million tax write off, I think he, retweeted somebody else's tweet mm -hmm. i don't think it was his original idea but the idea was since we're paying since we the taxpayers are that that's that's 30 million write-off we absorb that mm -hmm. they said why not make the film fucking public domain or like available to the taxpayer <laughs> which i was like fuck yeah you're right man like don't just delete it Put it in the Library of Congress. And maybe you got to go there to watch it, but fuck, who wouldn't? You know, there's, you know, there are some people who would do that. I would. That'd be my fucking the only time I ever really wanted to go to Washington. I was like, I'm going to go watch Batgirl in the Library <laughs> of Congress. Yeah, there was some somebody in either you know um, the House or the Senate who was like, you know, we we we're we're long overdue a revisiting of the antitrust laws for the for the Federal Trade Commission. And we have to invest. This feels an awful lot like insurance fraud. It feels like, you know, building a house then burning it down for the insurance money, which you're not <laughs> supposed to do. Um, you know, and it feels like it's a it's defrauding a business. Um, so to back up a little bit, uh, in case you're coming to this late, um, about a week ago, three days ago, whatever it was. The news broke that Coyote vs. Acme, starring John Cena, would become the third Warner Brothers already shot film to get shelved after previously killing Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt last August. Um, clearly the filmmakers were furious at it, because of course you are. Um, but the thing is that A, movie was fully completed and it had tested multiple times in the 90s, which, like, Argo tested in the 90s. Both Deadpool movies tested in the 90s. Um, you know, and according to people who've seen the film, um, which stars Will Forte and John Cena, it's really good. Like, it is not 
apparently the disaster that Batgirl was. Not sure I believe Batgirl was a disaster, but whatever. Um, apparently it's really great, you know? Um, and so people had started to cancel meetings at Warner Brothers. You know, filmmakers who had meetings in the books were like, if you guys, like, if I enter into good faith and make a movie with you, and this is just the way you conduct yourselves as a studio, why would I make a movie with you? Why would I ever do that? Um, and so what has happened since is because of the outrage, because of potential legal issues, because James Gunn co-wrote this movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. He's got a co-writing credit on it. Um, Warner Brothers has reversed their decision. They are not going to release it, but they're going to allow the filmmakers to take it to market and see if somebody else wants to buy it and then release it, which, you know, not a bad decision, better than the alternative, but also bizarre given that it's fucking Looney Tunes. Like, this guy don't care, dude. This Zaslav guy don't seem to give a fuck. I mean, they let a Batman show go to Amazon. Fucking yeah. Batman cartoon. Yeah. They're letting the DC universe go to Netflix as opposed to just Max. It's, you know, it's they yeah. used to be a very filmmaker-friendly studio. That's what they were known as. And I think this, this Coyote versus Acme thing put the, you know, fucking fear of god into warner brothers because a bunch of creatives were like i'm not going there anymore Fuck yeah. you, you better believe now in the age of disney did this right with willow took it off mm -hmm. and dumped it you better believe in in the age of studios now going oh we can write shit off all right fuck it every filmmaker every actor their contracts going forward on anything is going to include a you cannot fucking do this without a massive buyout yeah, uh, everyone's going to start protecting against this at this point. <clears throat> but uh, how nice to see like creative people make that point, and then the studio be like, "All right, fair enough, we hear you. Try yeah. to go try to sell it someplace. If you can sell it, go for it." There was a tweet from uh, from Peter Atencio who directed uh, the Keanu movie uh, with Key and Peele in it, and had directed like. 70% of the Key and Peele sketches, who uh, would retweet it uh, himself from 2020 saying, hey, you should become friends with like your assistant editor, treat them incredibly well, and always make sure that like once a week, they save to a hard drive that you have access to a, a sort of, whatever it is, watermark free version of your movie. Because at some point, you're going to want to have that. And if this is what is going to happen in this business, where suddenly the thing that you've made and labored for forever is now just vanished from the plane of existence, you should have a copy of it for yourself. Um, or just be the editor. Just be the editor. <laughs> that 4.30 movie sitting right over there. Ain't nobody could see. Even if I uh, fuck somebody who's like, taking it away from me, I'm like, good luck. I got the only copy. <laughs> well, JC's got one. Yeah, I, I do as I well. Mean, yeah, Kevin Nolan was uh, was doing press. I guess part of the the Oscar season run up for for Oppenheimer, and he was talking about um, all of the work he's been doing on the DVD Blu-ray release of Oppenheimer, and it was like, oh, I'm very committed to physical media. I'm, I'm like all the bonus features. We're we're fucking killing it because you should be able to own this movie if you want it, and not have it exist at the whim of some streaming service. Like, yeah, it's true. What's it's up, Batman? Nature. One of my friends who is um, more into, I used to be called Film Twitter. Now it's called Film X or X, mm. whatever they're calling Twitter now, was saying that there was a big movement behind the uh, Coyote vs. Acme movie to try to uh, Barbenheimer it, meaning whoever picks it up when they release it in the theater to just swarm the theater to make Zaslav look like the biggest asshole. Like, it opened at $150 million, and he sold it for a song, which I honestly could probably... That would probably get me out on, like, a Friday morning to see the movie. Um, he's same. Mm -hmm. 
just like I mean, I'd see it anyway because I fucking love Looney Tunes. Well, and what it's going to be like ninety minutes, maybe, right? Like it's it's yeah. going to be quick. It's going to be funny. It's e- easily digestible, um, and you can just you know stick it to corporate at the same time. And also, like physical we used to make things. <laughs> Physical media is why we can't let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Did we talk, I guess, was it, was it last week, the week before we talked? I don't think we'd covered that Best Buy was going to stop stocking Blu-rays. That like, and they had been like maybe one of the last physical places you can go and buy a Blu-ray disc. Maybe Target still has them, maybe Walmart, but I'm not sure. But Best Buy had been like committed to it until they weren't. Hold on. Those were, these are the Clerks 3 Pops. Woo! Those are damaged. Um, But this is some physical ass media, man. They, They put out this Clerks Saga box set. I'm gonna do an unboxing for you right now. Ooh. Uh, Hold on. Am I going to unbox it? No, because it's sealed shut. Anyway, it's got <laughs> Clerks movies in it. It's got fake quick stuff. You can put stickers on it. And then there's a box in the back that's got like the three movies in there. Um, it was kind of pricey. I had to buy these. Nobody sent them to me and shit. I bought two. And they were over 100 bucks. But if you like Clerks, fuck. Kind of cool. I saw somebody online was unhappy with it. And they were like, you know, fucking 130 bucks or whatever the fuck it was, and it's not 4K. You know, you've got my money for the last time. I, you didn't, I didn't get your money. Fucking, I don't know who did that. I think it was an Amazon exclusive or something. But Lionsgate put that together, um, and it's kind of it's just lovely. I saw a lot of praise for it as well, but I saw one dude got mad because he said it wasn't good enough for him. But I, physical media kids, re-embrace it, re-embrace it. Then they can't take it away from you. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on. Yes. It seems as if Taika Waititi, director of uh, Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder, um, has said that if there is going to be a fifth installment of Thor, he would not be involved. Not because he wouldn't want to be, not because he doesn't love Chris Hemsworth and didn't have a good time in Marvel, but he just said that he's got enough other projects in the pipeline that he's committed to, including um, he's doing a Star War. Um, he's doing an adaptation of the Kazuo Ishiguro novel, Clara and the Sun. And he's doing an adaptation of the graphic novel, The Inkal, or Inkle. I'm going to say it's Inkal because that sounds cooler. And, and like I said, so that's six or seven years gone. I'd imagine that another Thor would be happening a lot sooner than that. And so he just, it's not in the cards for him. Well, he made what, two? He made two out of the four. <clears throat> He's got half the Thors. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Mm. He's done it. Hell yeah. There, and I'm sure, you know, he took a lot of heat on that last one. People were unhappy. Mm-hmm. Life's too short. I'm sure he's <laughs> like, fucking made a Thor that people loved and a Thor that people didn't love. Now I'm just going to go make other shows like my pirate show he makes that pirate show doesn't he He does i love that pirate show and he's got like a soccer movie coming out or something my next goal wins which looks fun married to rita oro and they just bought a new fucking i think everything's going quite well yes he's got what we do in the shadows in season seven ordered for like four more seasons or whatever guys his own industry he don't need he don't need thor again but you know what ragnarok's an amazing fucking movie some way came to play. I enjoyed that movie. Indeed. Um, that boy Tim Miller, remember the guy who made the first uh the first Deadpool movie? This kid Tim Miller. <laughs> fucking he's the next big thing, man. He's fucking this boy genius. Um, he is he is getting in business with Warner Brothers. Um, the studio has picked up the rights to Alien Legion, that old Marvel comic tale uh that was created by Carl Potts. 
that ran uh God, how long did it, blah, 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 blah. didn't say exactly how long it ran but i was introduced as part of epic comics in 1983 the french foreign legion in space was focused on an intergalactic peacekeeping force that took in all manner of species without asking too many questions about their past or intentions um i used to love this book this book was super fucking dope it was you know starship troopers and fucking ragtag band of knuckleheads who were tasked with going into hot zones and cooling them off um with a uh, grimrod who i think was the the uh the the breakout character it was like space wolverine green skin deep hostility towards authority grimrod is my porn name yeah it is on your new only is that the name of your only fans yes grimrod <laughs> grimrod grimrod work those nips <laughs> telling you there's money to be made there we just have to throw away our dignity that's all that's all that's it that's all that's that um let's see what else we got there's a legend of zelda movie that they announced but you don't care about video games so much um who's in it nobody yet uh it's being produced by avi arad um and directed by west ball who did the maze runner trilogy and who has kingdom of the planet of the apes on deck for next year Oh, that says he directed that? Yeah. Um, but, you know, fucking Legend of Zelda is a massive franchise for Nintendo. It's been 10, 12, 23 different versions of that game. And so, yeah, makes all the sense in the world that somebody the would world eventually... Where, where uh, fucking Super Mario did what it did. It makes a billion dollars. Um, folks are... I saw some folks in chat asking, like, hey, man, where do I get those Clerks 3 pops? Including the very first Dante hip pop and whatnot. Uh, you can get them all over the internet, kids, but we sell them signed at jaynesilentbob.com. Anyway, back to the show. Back to the show. Uh, and that's pretty much all the news. It's fit to print, my friend. Bam. Let's talk trail, man. Oh, Bam oh. Bam, what's up? I was just going to bring that up. I saw a trailer that got me very excited this weekend. Which one? Rebel Moon? Uh, I saw Rebel Moon. I was like, this is fine. But I also saw Ghostbusters. Did you guys see the Ghostbusters trailer? Mm -hmm. Wonderful trailer. And you know what was so How weird about awesome. it is it's just like, it's not, they're not making it an event. It's not like, your childhood's in the balance. Like, it's just a movie. It's just a sequel-ass movie. Like, <laughs> I was so delighted. All of a sudden, their trailer dropped, and it's not like the fucking uh, era defining film of 2024. They're just like, no, it's Ghostbusters in the snow in New York City. Doesn't that sound fun? I'm like, fuck yes, it sounds fun. That's all it needs to be. It's a mm -hmm. good time. And we get to see like Winston and fucking Ray and fucking Venkman again. Like, I mean, so the, the only thing that I kept thinking watching that trailer was like, am I the only one surprised that Paul Rudd is still in these movies? Like, why is he here? He was in that last one, right? Afterlife. Yeah. Uh, this seemed, I mean, a sequel to Afterlife and whatnot. Um, I was like, I want to, I kind of want to just be with the kids. I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't need Paul Rudd to be there again. I didn't need Carrie Coon to be there again. Just like, hey man, don't, there ain't no such thing as Paul Rudd fatigue. Did you guys put him in everything? I saw a meme today, I think, that is uh, Wilford Brimley from Cocoon and Paul Rudd side by side. And Paul Rudd mm -hmm. is older today than Brimley was in Cocoon. Right. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> what? Yeah. And yet he looks eternally fucking youthful and shit. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that. Bradley Pooper in chat said Jason Reitman is a great director. I don't think Jason Reitman directed the new Ghostbusters, did he? I don't know. I think uh -huh. he's a producer, but I don't think he directed. JC, oh can you fact check that real quick? Yeah. Yeah. I think like once every like five years, there's a new Wilfred Brimley meme because there was the Tom Cruise one. It's like Tom Cruise is as old as Wilfred Brimley was in Cocoon. Now it's Paul Rudd is as old as Brimley was. Someone has that. You've passed the Wilfred Brimley birthday. Yeah. Um, I think which is like 51 or something like that, which is the age <laughs> he was when he was in Cocoon. Uh, Justin Sumi asked in chat, Jason Lee and Ethan Suplee do any My Name is Earl material 
on the cruise. That's right, kids. Jason Lee and Ethan Zaplee, two couple of mall rats going to be stowing away on the boat with me and Mark, man. Jay and Silent Bob's Cruise Askew coming your way in February 2024. We're at like um, 70, <clears throat> 78% sold, kids. What's up there, Bam? Uh, Gil Keenan is the director of Frozen Empire, which, by the way, is such an awesome name for the movie. Like, it's really like is. Empire State, but then, like, the ghost that comes back as is... Fro oh, it's so clever. And who's um, the director? Gil Keenan. He did uh, Monster House, City of Ember, the 2015 Poltergeist, uh, and he was a writer on Ghostbusters Afterlife. Hmm. Oh, so, fun and the fucking internet is just going crazy over there red parkas oh yeah They're like that's what Vecman wore in fucking in the movie remember and, and i guess they were also a look from the cartoon as well mm. it's uh yeah. i saw something that it was like they tried to make this movie like a like a big episode of the cartoon which is kind of cool Okay, I'm 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 with it. Don't it don't have to be like fucking like, you know, the event of the. Just make a fucking movie, man. Just a sequel, like we used to. Remember in the '80s and the '90s, they just made sequels and we went and shit. Well, <laughs> and it's it's coming out in March, so it wasn't like here's the preview for the trailer that's coming out in six months for the movie that's coming out in thirty six months. It was just like. Here's here's a teaser trailer for the movie that will be out in three months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this this I feel is like the the front end of all of this shit that was stalled because of the actor strike, now being slotted for release. And now they're like, hey, it's all coming. Here it all is. They're gonna clean up in March. And I say this as a as a movie exhibitor, Mark. I don't know if you know this or not, mm -hmm. but I own a movie theater. Um, Indeed. Smod Castle Cinema. So I don't just speak as a movie watcher. I speak as a movie exhibitor. And looking ahead at the next few months, fucking, we're we're looking forward to March and Ghostbusters. Fuck, because mm. there's not a lot coming. There's Aquaman's coming. Um, what else is there? <laughs> there's Aquaman coming. Aquaman. <laughs> not holding out a lot of hope for that either. So. It's uh yeah I, I I Ghostbusters will be a nice a nice march. Mm. Glad they're not waiting until summertime because I know as a film exhibitor we're gonna need that sooner rather than later. Indeed. Um, I saw a trailer for um, what else did I see? The trailer for Rebel Moon, which I thought was cool. Looks mm -hmm. good. I'm there for fucking sci-fi. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and see that in theaters. I'm gonna try because I know it's playing at the Egyptian. I think. Um, which, if you're not in Los Angeles, the Egyptian uh, is a hundred-year-old movie theater that had been on Hollywood Boulevard since whatever the beginning of movies. That has just been sort of restored and refurbished, and and they're now back to hosting seventy millimeter screenings in thirty-five. But it's all on film, and it's all gorgeous. And so they have a seventy millimeter cut, a print of Rebel Moon that they're going to be showing there for a couple of weeks, I think. And so I definitely want to see that in person. Um, and Netflix bought that theater, right? Yeah, it's a Netflix jammy jam. So, like, the killer had been there. I think might still be there. Um, but they're big into like, here's a movie that you haven't seen in a while, or a brand new thing, and then filmmaker interviews and Q and As. And so, like, Fincher was there talking about the killer. Um, I would like to see it on a big screen, but I will probably watch it at home. If it's a Netflix theater, maybe fucking, maybe I can get in there with. Masters of the Universe Ooh. Revolution, another Ooh. trailer that dropped this week. Also, the the last what is it? A Avatar, the last, the last Airbender. Avatar, the last Airbender trailer dropped. Yeah, Netflix just went fucking nuts. They had their geeked week, so they dropped a bunch of fucking trailers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Masters of the Universe Revolution um, was one of them. And this is just a teaser; doesn't really give the full breadth of the plot. Doesn't even you know. It doesn't even tell you who Shatner is mm. playing. Um, but yeah, it's uh I 
posted the trailer and ran away from the internet as fast as I could <laughs> before all the mean kids came out to be like, boo, boo. <laughs> um, this is Hordak versus He-Man versus Skeletor. It's the fucking battle royale threesome and shit like that. The triumvirate. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that comes out uh, next year. But anyway, the trailer for that is up. What else was there a trailer for? Fall uh, Guy? You see the Fall Guy trailer? Uh, I did see the Fall Guy trailer. I mean, look, I'll watch Ryan Gosling do anything. I'll watch Ryan Gosling pull the switch on the electric chair that I'm sitting in. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do it charmingly and fucking... <laughs> That's one good Canadian. Um, so... That trailer looks good. Looks nothing like, you know, it's crazy because they use the Bon Jovi song. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, for my money, they got one of the greatest theme songs of all time. Fucking the unknown stuntman song, which maybe they're, you know, I'm sure that means doesn't mean as much to, you know, nobody going to see this movie of a certain, unless you're of a certain age, probably knows the source material like we did. Yes. But I'm also 100% sure that there's like a Daft Punk remix of The Unknown Stuntman that's going to open up that movie because, of course, there is. <laughs> or close it or both. Fuck. Yeah. Um, and just how, like, remember uh, Lee Major sang the theme song? Mm. The Gaz should sing the theme song. Grammy nominee. <laughs> Ryan he Gaz. is, right? For fucking I'm Just Ken. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I'm 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 ready for that. What else was the trailers for? Um, I'm trying to think what else I saw in front of uh, the Marvels. And there was a Boys in the Boat. Did Did you see that trailer? No. The George Clooney um, rowing Olympic movie that he directed about like these these like New York kids. Who had been living in the slums? Who enrolled in a in a in a crew club in in college because they would give them room and board, and then they made it all the way to the 1938 Olympics to swim against Hitler. This is a true story. True story, which they give away most of in the trailer. I like uh, George Clooney as a director. I think he's talented. Mm. It doesn't look bad. It just looks like if you see that trailer, then you've seen the movie. Yeah. All right. Um, um somebody said in chat scott pilgrim versus the world anime i haven't seen is that up yet it drops next friday or this friday this friday it drops <clears throat> there's a garfield trailer which i haven't seen somehow they want us to believe that uh sam jackson is chris pratt's father why Garfield's dad's voice is Sam Jackson? Yep. I mean, okay. The plot of the trailer is like Garfield finds his father. <laughs> it's a little bit like Garfield, the poor orphan cat who John takes in. Is it and really? Then, yeah. And then at some point he sees his dad, who's a big hulking bruiser of a cat voiced by Sam Jackson. Wow. Like if and a million years. somebody was like what do you think the garfield <laughs> movie's gonna be about i don't think i ever would have picked that i was gonna be like, oh you know he hates mondays he eats lasagna like <laughs> like oh no it's about fucking trauma of losing a parent <laughs> why don't he love me uncle phil <laughs> um wow now i now i want to see the trailer more than ever um <laughs> i'm shocked that chris pratt's not also voicing Garfield's dad. He does every <laughs> other role on the in the animated world at this point. This is what I do now. Yeah, really. He is the voice. Uh, think about it. Chris Pratt is going to be the voice of an entire generation's childhood. Yeah. He's their Mel Blanc. <laughs> man of a thousand voices. Uh, more like, like man of one voice a thousand times. <laughs> yeah, man of a thousand jobs. <laughs> Um, I still have not seen Super Mario Brothers, but uh, my kid recently was like, you have to watch it. She's like, it's beautiful. I was like, come on. And she was like, it's really, really good. Have you seen it? 
No. Yeah, me neither. I, I was not a big, like, I wasn't raised on Nintendo, so. But I, I feel like I should now get around to seeing it. Bamf. You know. Oh, Bamf, <laughs> man. He's got, he's got something to say. So I was raised on Nintendo, and I love all the Mario games. And uh, I watched it, and I was like, eh. I watched it with with Jen, and she's like, I loved that movie. It was so great. She never had TV or Nintendo or anything. So, like, maybe you don't need it. She just thought it was so wonderful. So, Um, yeah, my kid, she didn't grow up playing Mario. So, and, but she loved the flick. So, maybe I, maybe I'll do it. I mean, it's just sitting there on, where is it, Peacock now? Is it? I can watch it for free, kind of. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Fire away. How often do you turn on any other streaming service that's not Netflix just to see what's there? All the time. Really? Uh, just I, like, shopping. S- I look, I spend an inordinate amount of time surfing tiles. And it's like as a as a you know, especially fucking all last week, I'm just mm. convalescing with, with the wife. And uh, for those who tuned in late, my wife shattered her hip. So she's out of commission for a while. So I've been playing nursemaid and stuff. So we've had a, a long, a lot of time to surf every streaming service. So I got Netflix. I got Max. I got Amazon Prime. I got Paramount Plus. I got, you know, I pay for premium YouTube and shit. Um I got a bunch. So I surf the tiles quite often. Yes. And it makes me feel as a creator, it makes me feel like when I use a plastic bottle and I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I've just added to the problem. Like, before I went to make the 430 movie, I had this real fucking existential crisis where I was surfing through all the tiles, first on Amazon, then on fucking uh, Max. And I was like, what are you doing? You're just going to make one more fucking tile. Like all these fucking tiles and all these movies that like no one's ever going to get around to watching them all. And you now you're just going to add another one on the fucking pile. What are you what are you doing? Stop it. Um, And then I had to shake that off. Be like, this is what you do for a living. Like, and it's your passion. (laughs) Like, of course you fucking. But yeah, I, I surf the tiles a lot. Why? You don't? Uh, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, I'll I'll turn on Netflix and just kind of see what's there. But I can't remember the last time I went to, like, Paramount Plus. I was like, what's on offer from Paramount Plus? I had to to watch that Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone show, The the Curse, because it was on Showtime. Oh, you know what? I watched on my Showtime app. But when I got to the Showtime app, they were like, hey, fool, we're shutting this down. (laughs) And you go to Paramount Plus from now on, but we'll let you watch it one more time here. So I did watch it on my Showtime app. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll go to them specifically for it. Like if I'm going to watch a Star Trek, I got to go to Paramount Plus. It used to be Poker Face was the reason I went to Peacock, and then might have wandered around a little bit, but then vanished pretty quickly. Like I'm not poking around Apple TV to see what's there. I'm not. I think it's like Netflix. Criterion, ironically, uh, I'll I'll just kind of see what's new. Like, ooh, 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 this is here. Ooh, this is cool. Bound is here. I haven't seen Bound in forever. It's always like, oh, I haven't seen this in forever. Um, and it's a great print, and it's you know really well presented. Like, I'll I'll dig into that shit. But it's, I was just I was idly wondering, you know, at what point, especially as they're all starting to charge more for less. You know, like I got this email from from Max. It was like, hey, Max subscriber, you know how this is what you currently pay for for 15 bucks a month? And here's what you get. Now, if you want to keep this particular brand of service, it's going to cost you $3 more. If you want to keep paying the same amount of money, we're going to take shit away. I was like, huh. Okay. Mm. That seems weird. I mean, I understand it as a as a person in the world who's paying attention to how streaming services are not making that much money, so they're just going to begin squeezing people. Um, but it just got me thinking about my habits as regards to streaming tiles, surfing, and how much of it I don't actually do. I spend a lot of time shopping, looking for something. 
And um, I got high marks this week for being a, a, a good DJ who was nice. like, kept fucking stuff going and kept her mind off of her hip and shit like that. So yeah, I've, I've been digging deep. And, uh, but you know, my secret go-to is always YouTube. Mm. Cause worst case scenario, you can watch some SNL skits. That's very true. Um, but I also like the Midas touch, the guys that, you know, that I, that's, you know, I'm not a very political person, but I do listen to their show all the time. Hmm. Um, just to hear what's going on in the government and shit. And every time I listen to something about it, I'm just like, I know that's like supposed to be the domain of grownups, you know, like government and, and people that wear suits and ties and shit like that. <laughs> Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I just prefer our make-believe world, Mark. I mean, it makes its own kind of sense, this make-believe world. Yeah. I just want to tell some stories until I drop fucking dead. And But I feel every once in a while, I'm like, <laughs> I should get educated on what's going on in the world. Pull my head out of my ass and see what's going on <laughs> politically in the landscape. <laughs> And so I watched that show. Bam, bam, what's up? You know what I did the other day? I what? was, I found myself uh, at Vidiot's, which is, it used to be a video store on the they west got a side. Theater, right? yeah, yeah. So I, I was there for a thing that I don't know if I can talk about, but I was there for a thing, uh, a work related event. And I walked into their video store and they have, like 60,000 movies or something ridiculous there. And I found myself browsing their movie collection and they have an awesome theater. And like, I don't, I've never been into like, like going to the new Bev or the Cine family or any of the like LA movie scenes. They always kind of seem like clicky and pretentious and full of shit. But I walked into that place and it was so laid back and cool. Um, and like just looking at physical movies, like they had the collector's edition of Cloak and Dagger, that like video game movie with the yeah. kid from E.T. Uh, yeah, and I like, mm -hmm. yeah, and I found myself like holding that and being like, fuck, I really want to rent this, even though I know I have it at home. Um it just seems so chill. And the movie theater's got like a bar in the lobby. It's this gorgeous movie theater. Anyway. Big is the movie theater. It's big. It's probably. It's about the size it, of the big house at Smod Castle. It's about yeah. 250 seats. Yeah. 275, maybe. Tell me about that. I think Liz Destro, the producer on, uh, on last my last few flicks, including. Mm -hmm. The 430 movie was telling me about it and i was like this sounds like a place that maybe we could do a local smod castle cinemas program at so like all the shit i do at smod castle cinemas i got a lot of people out here going like do it here show mm -hmm. jersey the extended cut out here uh and yeah that could be the place like rather yeah. than buying well i mean as if that's an option i don't really have that option but as opposed to like back home, I bought a movie theater with my friends. I can't do that out here. I'll tell um, you the, the other thing we could do there if we wanted yeah. to make some extra money is that Scum and Villainy has a catering license. So we could do a Scum and Villainy pop-up with a Smod Castle Cinemas movie screening at Vidiot's. And so Vidiot's doesn't sell booze, so you could bring booze the in to sell? They sell, I think they have a beer and wine license, but they don't have like an alcohol license. So like we could bring stuff in and, uh, and make an, you know, make a weekend of it. Mm -hmm. I uh, like it. It yeah, was it's, so it's nice cool. Theater. It the was space, so cool. A lot, a lot of people I tr know and trust, including you both, uh, uh, speak very highly of the space. Yeah. I went to go see Aliens there um, a couple months ago. And uh, because they are a straight up legit rep house, they can, can get they show Fox that though. That's a Fox film, and Disney owns it. Because, and I remember this from from trying to do shit at the at the Alamo Draft House, was that Disney is okay with rep houses that are one hundred percent rep houses that don't show current movies. They just don't fucks with people who also show 
uh, first run and repertory stuff. And so that's their loophole. Hmm. Um, like the new Bev, granted it's Quentin, so he can do whatever he wants, but the new Bev can also program Fox and like classic Disney animated stuff. Like they'll do fucking, you know, Robin Hood and Sword in the Stone and fucking Black Cauldron and shit all day long. Um, should we do some Q and A? We could, yeah, we should, but I, somebody in chat said, you know what? Don't chase it down. <laughs> yeah. Someone wasn't happy that fucking, you know, I'm I'm not more tuned into to the world or or let me see. How, how do I you know, before I was talking about like I, you know, I, I'm not very like politically tuned in and blah 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 and somebody is just like i mean it, it, this is not what they said but i'm that's the problem i'm part of the i'm the problem with the world mark is that i'm not thinking about that stuff kids i'm gonna say it one more time uh, my place in this world as i see it is to be the distraction for that. And I'm just a fucking clown. I'm an idiot over here who does fucking hopefully funny things to distract you from your own eventual demise and the horrors in the world. So I'm not a person to be taken seriously. Never have been. Never said that I wanted to be. Um, so yeah, if you're if you come here and you're like, hey man, you should fucking get political like you come to the wrong place there's so many wonderful places for that of people who actually know what they're talking about um you know i'm 53 and all i want to talk about is make pretend stuff like that's my function in the world is to make try to make people laugh try to give people comfort you know not everyone goes for it and shit but it's clearly enough people have gone for it that i've been doing it for like 30 years and stuff but you don't need me weighing in on politics and you know what my politics are. Look at my movies and shit, but you don't need me getting specific. And so, no, me and Mark are not part of the problem. I don't. <laughs> I, I do spend, you know, do you guys have I your iPhone? Yeah, no, no. I was like, what? <laughs> you, <laughs> Deception from within our ranks. <laughs> Bam, man, no. Do you guys get the, um, the screen time alerts like congratulations your screen time was down 20 percent last week for a total of mm. six hours a day and you're like yeah. i spend a quarter of my life on this fucking phone but a lot of people it's like instagram or twitter or facebook mine is always yahoo news and so i read a lot of news and every I'm gonna day stop right there yahoo news you go to yahoo news <laughs> yeah yahoo still exists I mean, yeah. because because you've found a time machine. Like, why, why? <laughs> was 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 Ask Jeeves busy? It's, yeah. it's <laughs> Yahoo. It, they while it, you're at Yahoo, you might want to <laughs> Yahoo Google and look into that. <laughs> but Bing won't take my calls anymore, so I'm at Yahoo. There's Just out of curiosity, and I'm not shitting on it. If you like Yahoo, but, but I mean, I haven't heard anyone fucking. It it's a it is an aggregate, right? So you never are actually reading Yahoo news stories. It pulls from different things. Of course, and there's of course. something that's about your search engine of choice, JC, not my search engine just for news. So I'll go to Yahoo and I'll scroll the front pages, news feed. My Google front page just says Google with like a funny little thing, depending on what's going on. My, my Google, <laughs> where's your algorithm at Yahoo? Uh, I mean, my Google page, it just says Google. I don't have any of the other crap on there. Well, neither does mine, but then you go to the menu for Google News. Like, uh, that's I didn't even I'm know that. got to do this, but I get my shit from Google News. Where do you get your news, Mark? Uh, there's a guy on the corner who seems to know <laughs> a lot about a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, it used to be uh, the site formerly known as Twitter. Um because I would, there, there was a handful of journalists that I liked to follow who would kind of, you know, kind of 
dovetail me through what whatever was happening in the world. Um, now it is it is more often than not Google. It is more often than not Apple, like Apple, who is now doing some of that aggregation work and just like appears as like a top story on my thing or whatever. And it's pulling from New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and Washington Post and Yahoo. Um, but yeah, like I'm not I'm I am rarely like a I'm going to dive deep on the news this day. I'm more like a did something happen I need to hear about? Okay, let me investigate. We uh, interrupted Banfan because we were so fucking <laughs> about Yahoo, but he's got a point to his story. It's not just I, I use Yahoo, it's something else. Go. Well, so I wake up every morning and I, I go to Yahoo. Like, if I'm on my phone for six hours a day, like four hours of it is reading news. Um, just because I want to see is today the day the world is going to end in some horrible way and am I going to be prepared for it? And, and essentially that's it. You could spend four hours a day reading the news and it's all bad. And it's not, you're not learning anything. It's just like Donald Trump had another court case today and people said stuff and there's outrage over whatever somebody said on both sides. And you're like, Oh, okay. That again, you know, Oh, more bombs were dropped in a bunch of different places that again it's all bad and you're not any smarter or more well informed you just know that there's all sorts of bad stuff happening which pretty much you know anyway it's not like you're making like it's not going to change who you're voting for you know what i mean like it's not like you're on the edge of being like should i you know i think i'm gonna vote for uh robert kennedy this this time out like (laughs) it's not gonna change anything so like don't it doesn't like you're not the problem like i'm the problem i'm feeding into the algorithm that's selling the rage clicks like that's the problem yeah i am i'm a google news guy and um it took me a while to realize like oh it's gonna give you the kind of news that you click on Mm mm-hmm like when I when I figured out, oh, it's learning me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I then I realized I'm I'm only seeing news that you know you'd be it'd be if you saw my Google news feed, you would not be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you'd be like, there's an awful lot of entertainment news in here. But I do I do stay abreast. Like I get up in the morning and I like my father used to read the newspaper. I hit google news in the morning and sit there and read like everything that's happening that day the front page and stuff um but doesn't mean i'm educated about it just means that i'm abreast um it's i mean it's i am a uh oh let's fix it or here's the solution kind of person and that's easy when you're like making fucking movies or you're in the Kevin Smith business and shit, but like, you can't do that in the real world where you're like, Oh, here's an easy solution to what's going on someplace else. Like, I don't have any answers. That's why I feel it's best to just be the guy that's like, Hey man, let me tell you about the time that fucking Victor Garber came on our show. He's coming on our show. No, (laughs) I'll say never happened. I also, once a week getting ready for trivia so tomorrow morning instead of going to yahoo news like it's 1995 i'll go i go to like den of geek and collider and i read Mm. all the geek and entertainment news for the week to write trivia from yeah my uh i mean in 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 all fairness and and candor i do get my news more often than not from television like I, I get up at like 7 a.m. every day and the first thing that goes on is like the Today Show. And so I will get their first 20 minutes, which is, you know, I'm not going to say comprehensive, but like what's happening in the world? The first half an hour of the Today Show is when you kind of get that. My wife likes to watch the five o'clock news. So sometimes I'll just sit with her as she pours through that stuff, which some of it is important. Some of it is just like, here's what's happening in Ann Arbor that was weird because a moose ran through a guy's house today. <laughs> Mm. okay um 
you know, and then like MSNBC is on sometimes. John Oliver is a great source of my news. I watch, I um, watch that every week as well. In the way that The Daily Show with Jon Stewart used to be, you know, not as Jon Stewart intended, because he would always say, we're not a news show, I'm a comedian trying my best. But I, I would still sort of get at least perspective from that stuff. Um, but yeah, like I, I similarly to, to JC and to you, I can't fix it. I generally know what's happening ish. You know, I know how I feel about it sometimes. Occasionally I will portray or reveal how I feel about it on the internet for people to see. More often than not, I don't. Um, because sometimes I don't have anything to add to the conversation. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I'm just not smart enough to, like, offer an opinion on how to solve the world's problems. And nor am I in a position to have that opinion heard or do anything about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I am smart enough. I just don't want the pain. <laughs> that too. <laughs> There's so little to be gained. It's just not my, like, not what I'm here to fucking do. I'm not, I wouldn't be good at it. I'd ruin things. Doug on funny in chat said, Supreme Court is corrupt. They overturn Roe v. Wade. It matters to know who to remove from office. Of course. Like, I'm, I'm, did I paint myself as completely ignorant? I'm just saying, I, I, I believe it all started with me talking about how much news I consume. And I try to consume more to stay abreast. Tee -hee. But, um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make me Ooh. feel like an adult, Ooh. as you Ooh. just said. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't. To get back to the nipple work that me and Mark were promising earlier, um, it just doesn't like, like I'm not, I, I, like I don't consume the news and then turn around and regurgitate it to the world going like, and I'm mad. Like, I, you got plenty of people to do that. Uh, I'll be over here going like, if you come to me, I'm mad. I'm going to try to make you fucking laugh. Like, take the, you know, edge off and shit. Like, I don't know. That's I'm I'm not the guy you come to because I'm like, yeah, I'm mad too. Like, that's why I can't do. You know, we opened the show talking about like, let's do outrage. That's gonna <laughs> get clicks. But I'm not. What was that line in fucking Barton Fink? Um, John Goodman's like, they say I'm a madman, but I'm not mad at anybody. <laughs> Most people I just feel sorry for. <laughs> Um, that's from a movie. That's not Check how I that. Um, all right. Let's go to the Q&A. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> um, cool. Can we talk before we dive into that? Rick and Morty season seven. Yeah. It's happening right now. And some people, of course, have opinions about the changing of the voices and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Step that aside. The most recent episode that just went up, like, brings to a close a storyline they've been fucking with for a few seasons. Um, it's, it's always a funny show, but like Rick and Morty remains some of my favorite sci-fi at the moment. Like <laughs> they're, they're always fucking telling a story that at the end of which I'm like, man, I couldn't do that. Like that's, that's smart. Um, <laughs> and uh, the most recent episode like was, was pretty, pretty wonderful. I, you know, I know some people are like, you know, oh, it ain't the same anymore. But I thought this episode stood shoulder to shoulder with some of the other mythology episodes they've done. I had a really good time watching it. Nice. I um, uh, oh. <clears throat> I have never seen an episode of Rick and Morty. And uh, I, I have this to offer, though. That um, the new voice actors came into the bar a few weeks ago on a Tuesday night to celebrate the show coming out and them being on the show and they were awesome. So I am all for it because they came to my bar to celebrate <laughs> their non, uh, star Wars sci-fi show. And, yeah. uh, and were fantastic, uh, guests of the bar and had a really good time. So I, I have that to add to anybody who doesn't like those guys. I like them because they, uh, help pay for my daughter's birthday party this weekend. 
<laughs> they they sound like it to me. I you know I've been watching Rick and Morty for years, and there are moments where it's like, oh, that's not the way it would normally be inflected by Justin. But I thought the the new voices totally work. Um, it, you know, at least for Rick and Morty, Mr. Poopy Butthole, who was in like the first episode, didn't quite sound like him. Um, but in any event, yeah, it, it, it was. I thought it was. I, I enjoyed the fuck out of the most recent episode. Um, okay, all right. Let us. <coughs> all right. Said feels like a stolen show. What Rick and Morty? Aren't the same people still working on it, with the exception of one? I, I believe so. Is Dan Harmon still working on it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because he's doing interviews about it instead. Um, you know, you could certainly say it feels like somebody's missing, but I, I don't know that it feels um, stolen. Anywho. Anywho. Uh, all right, Crypto Scotty wanted to know, uh, if you could... Blow up large one IP to fight Godzilla. Who or what would you pick? So you oh, can Godzilla. blow up anything to fight Godzilla. Like make it big. Have you anyone seen the Godzilla minus zero trailer? Yes, it looks fucking dope. Looks fantastic. Oh, um, okay, I can blow up anything to fight Godzilla. Hmm. I'll go. Michelangelo okay. from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I just Why? think that'd be very fun. Well, he's a ninja, and he could surf big waves in the ocean. He's amphibious, so I feel like it'd be a pretty good match. Godzilla can shoot fire blast things, and Michelangelo has nunchucks. I think it'd just be silly. It'd be fun. It'd probably have to be a cartoon. I don't know if you could get away with a live action. Um, plus, they cross over Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with everything else now. I think it. Uh, I think it would work. Um, I saw a cat like chase down like one of them lizards in in the garden. I don't know if it's a gecko, but one of those fucking fast things. Mm -hmm. And the cat was super fast. It didn't matter if that thing was fast. Cat fucking got it. So I'm gonna say any ass house cat blown up as big if not bigger than Godzilla is gonna take Godzilla out cats are fucking horribly vicious and <laughs> if not for the fact that they're so tiny I think they'd kill us all um, so I think you blow up any ass cat I'm not even talking about fucking Chris Pratt's Garfield <laughs> Garfield's dead you take any ass house cat man especially a bored one Fucking blow that up and be like, go take care of old atomic breath. Oh. Rip the tail off, pull the head off. Fucking slap that body around and shit. Mm -hmm. And cute. Cute. Who like to see a giant fucking cat. Problem is, once he's done with Godzilla, you're all next. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was tempted to go uh, a robot. Um, only because of the classic sort of kaiju versus giant robot robot thing, but that feels dumb and easy. Like as we've all seen Pacific Rim, we know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got kind of fascinated with the idea of uh, of Clubber Lang versus Godzilla. Mister T against a Godzilla seems like the fucking way to go, especially uh, when he impugns. Godzilla's coxmanship <laughs> life right in front of him. When he's like, you want a real man? <laughs> Come on, I'll show you a real man. <laughs> and then and then I started thinking about the Kurgan from Highlander. Um basically basically it's the it's the impugning of the coxmanship, basically. And he's like, Oh, she was your woman. Uh, I took his head and I raped his woman before his body was even cold. Oh, I see. This was in a Godzilla movie? What movie? This is in Highlander. Oh, yeah. The Kurgan versus. Yeah, he's pretty horrible. The Kurgan. He's pretty horrible. 
But then I was like, you know, what would be just more fun and more adorable? It is like Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, who's already huge, versus Godzilla. Only because then you get to toast the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man with atomic fire. Nice. Yeah. Nice. We all win there. Delicious for everybody. Bring your graham crackers and it's fucking, it's a party. <laughs> um, good question. He's just a sailor. He's in town. Wants to have a good time. <laughs> um, Related to Clubber Lang, did you guys watch the Sly documentary on Netflix? Loved it. Holy yeah. shit. Thank you for bringing it up. Loved it. And like, I'm not like, I, I like Sylvester Stallone. I've liked Sylvester Stallone movies across my lifetime and whatnot, but I'm not like, you know, fucking, I don't have a poster of Sylvester Stallone hanging up. Although I've always enjoyed and, and liked his journey, right? He's a guy came from nowhere, fucking believed in himself, wrote fucking Rocky. They tried to buy it away from him and cast other people. He's like, no, no, I'm going to be in this and shit. And you know, he's, this guy created three franchises for himself. But he's a screenwriter and he's a director as well as a fucking actor, icon and stuff like that. So I've always had respect for him and, and whatnot. But like I would I was never like, you know, fucking Sly is my guy. I thought the documentary was wonderful. Absolutely fucking wonderful. Like it's it's worth watching. Yeah, I, it, it it definitely portrays him and I know he was involved in it. He's like I am a writer first above all yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. And like Quentin, long writer, yeah. like writes out longhand and somebody else types it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I dug it, but, and it's, it's, I suppose it's natural to want to compare it to the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary series that they did. Which I didn't watch. And that was, I haven't watched series? that yet. It's four episodes. This was, um, this was one and done. You're out in two hours. One and done. And I, and I think I like the Arnold one better, only because it goes a bit deeper. Like the Sly one is, it's, it's very much about his art. It's very much about him as an actor and a writer and a producer. Um, but it does not go very deeply at all into his family stuff. Like it talks about his dad, but like, I don't know who his wife is. I don't know who any of those children are. He never talks about the death of his son, which I'm like... I mean, if we're never, of, well, he talks, but not about it specifically. He right. Talks like, about oh, son. He talks about his son, but then they just flash the like 1978 to 2000 and whatever for Sage to learn. Oh, I was like, yeah. oh, that's that's moving, but like, good. you know, like I, I, like I dug it, especially on the front end of it, because it's it's revealing the creation of an artist, which is super interesting to me. Um, but towards the tail end of it, it doesn't go that deep into like, all right, well, who is he now? Like, what is he about? What's what's beneath that surface? You could literally do an entire documentary on just Rocky. Yeah. Then you could do a whole documentary on just Rambo. Then you could do a whole documentary on just The Expendables. And then they had to do everything else and cram this dude's entire <laughs> life, all the other movies and his ups and downs. and Yeah. Like, there's a great story in the Arnold documentary where he talks about the rivalry that they had in yeah. the 80s and 90s. And the, like, he tells the story of how he gets Stallone to star in Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. He does that in, in the Stallone document, in Sly. Does he? Because I remember he goes, I mean, maybe it's because Arnold came first, but he talks about how he kept telling Sly that he was going to star in it. And so... Sly's like, well, fuck it, I want to do it. And I want to do it. And I want to do it. And then Arnold drops out. It's like, I was never going to star in this fucking movie. It's awful. <laughs> and Stallone is stuck being in Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Um, somebody asked in chat, uh, who was it? Uh, Davey Sockrocker said, does it talk about Oscar? It does. It does. It, they spend a, like a shocking amount of time on Oscar. <laughs> and he kind of defends like farce or whatever they called it. Yeah. Um, it is it is a good it's a good time for Netflix and kind of documentaries about fame. You know, between the Arnold Doc, between Sly, between the Beckham. I series, started watching the Beckham one out of out of Sly. I was like, Arnold or Beckham? And I actually went with <laughs> Beckham because I know nothing about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's kind of amazing. The Arnold stuff, like it's because Arnold has had so many chapters in his life. 
um, is what makes that kind of, at least to me, a little bit deeper than the Sly things. Because Sly's had two chapters. I've had I'm a nobody actor, just fucking banging around New York, and I'm Sylvester Stallone. Um, where Arnold was like bodybuilder, movie star, politician, womanizer, um, you know, a lion in winter. What am I doing? Like it's it's got more places to go. Um, but yeah, and apparently there's a Robbie Williams documentary that's pretty good, and that's another dude who like came out of nowhere and blew up in the world stage and then kind of vanished shortly thereafter. There's an Albert Brooks documentary on HBO. Oh, yeah. I want yeah. to watch. I, I love Albert Brooks. That documentary there, is great. There's a Wham! documentary on Netflix that's fascinating. Fantastic. <laughs> I watched it a couple months ago or whenever it first dropped. Love that documentary. Shock yeah. how many of those songs I could sing. Mm hmm I was like, oh my God, I guess I was a Wham fan. <laughs> like everybody kind of was in the 80s. Yeah. Um, but that doc is great. Uh, yeah, did this... you guys know that Albert Brooks is, this was a trivia question a couple weeks ago. Albert Brooks's real name was Albert Einstein. He changed yeah. it to Brooks. And, and, yeah, <laughs> for obvious well, reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Question What's number up? two. All right, question, question two. First one only. Uh, Neba says, which fictional character do Mark and Kevin think they look like? I think I look like Silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't think I look like him, but I've, uh, there have been a lot of people whenever I'm like, I got a jacket on and my hair is done up and I'm not wearing a baseball cap. They're like, Oh my God, you look like Robert Downey Jr. Um, which I don't, I think it's just because the beard mm. shape that, and my delivery or something like that. But I told the story on that the mental health video that when I was yeah. at Sierra, um, like fucking I was sitting around and there's a new guy came in from Detroit and we were bullshit and I'd been there for a couple of weeks. So I was able to be like, hey, this is this and this is that and blah, blah, blah. This is when, you, you know, fucking this is how you get a vegan burger for lunch if you want it. And um, after we were talking for 20 minutes and shit, he was like, um, man, did anyone ever tell you you look like that famous guy? And I thought for sure he was going to be like, you know, I thought he was talking about the character I play in movies and shit. So I was getting ready to be like, well, yes, I have also been Silent Bob. But before I could fucking say anything, he goes, Robert Downey Jr. And that just fucking made everything. That made, you know, going to the mental hospital worth it for me. <laughs> Somebody be like, you remind me of Robert Downey Jr. I was like, I love Iron Man. Thank you. Um, all right. So, uh, but hands down, Silent Bob. What about you? Uh, I, I, I never get confused or even told I look like a famous person. Um, when I, I was just starting to work for Entertainment Weekly, I just got first like on staff full time, and they had a retreat to the uh, Mohunk Mountain House in upstate New York. Um, and so there was whatever, the 80 some odd people who worked on the staff, we all went away for a weekend because this when publishing made money and you could afford to do that. And the first night they had a, a it was like seating as if it was a wedding. And so you figured out where you were sitting, but you went to the table that had all the names on it. But instead of the names, there was the, the celebrity doppelganger that you had. And mine was Tracy Morgan. And I was like, Blair Underwood is right there, you guys. <laughs> Fucking Denzel is like, there's, I'm the black dude on staff. I could have been fucking William December Williams. But no, I'm Tracy Morgan. All right, fine, whatever. You're more, you're more Idris Elba, man. You're totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the picket line, I know, on the picket line, I got, I got legit mistaken more than once for the guy who wrote and directed One Night in Miami, who co-directed um, Into the Spider-Verse and Soul, a uh, writer named, writer-director named Kemp Powers. Um, literally, I had like four people be like, are you Kemp Powers? I, like, no, I just wish I had his career. I see that. I did a lot of award season stuff with Kemp a couple mm -hmm. years ago when he was like promoting Soul and One Night in Miami constantly. I see that. Yeah, like I, when I look at him, like you know, I, I see how you got there. 
Um, thank you. I am not him. I can I, I literally walked on the line for 20 minutes with a dude who was asking me questions about one night in Miami, expecting me to answer them. And I didn't quite, I, I, he, all he would say was like, I really loved your movie. And I was like, oh, thank you very much. We just finished it a little while ago. Now I'm working on some comic books. He's like, oh, you, you do comic books? That's odd. And it was only at the end of this conversation that he says, hey, man, I just I wanted to tell you, I just loved One Night in Miami. I was like, oh, you think I'm somebody else. He's like, what comic are you working on? You're like, one about Muhammad Ali. And he's like, really? One Night in Miami? Yeah, makes sense. You did all the research. I'm like, how did you know I did so much research? I did, thank you. What about you, JC? Who do you look like? Anyone ever um, tell you? The one that I get constantly, not as much with, the new haircut uh was uh adam scott i guess ben wyatt from parks mm -hmm. and rec i could fucking totally see that now that you say it oh my god you're absolutely right yes what's um, his name adam scott yeah. yeah adam scott people at the bar tell me that all the time and then the one that i get on like the internet a lot is like uh the ugly version of sam witwer um so like i guess star killer from force unleashed <laughs> uh which i think has more to do that we're just like pasty white vampires from the chicago suburbs than it we actually <laughs> look <laughs> like each other but i think our voices and accent and delivery is very similar because we grew up together tony bologna in chat says jc looks like ellen degeneres I, perhaps with, <laughs> with a stupid haircut yeah maybe that mohawk is what does it um, uh, Hazy Wave says JC looks like Sean Gunn. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if I lost like 20 more pounds. And gained about a foot. <laughs> yeah. There's some adamant happening, though. That's true. Don't drink, don't smoke. What do you do? <laughs> um, a fucking Kabuki kid said in quotes, I must say. You think she looks like Edgar? <laughs> oh, Edgar. <Grimley. laughs> <laughs> Do a barrel roll in chat thinks you look like something about Mary. <laughs> no. You've got a fucking Well it doesn't like it, when the whole thing's up, but I have um, to wear Jamie, headphones. Head. <laughs> um all right. Uh okay. Let's do our third and final question of the evening. Uh last one since we've all talked about getting older tonight. Uh, Jeremiah Freeman wanted to know if we were getting dementia and could watch one movie every day for the rest of our life, like it was the first time, what movie would it be and why? Tempted to say Groundhog Day, but that's not. <laughs> um, uh, what, what movie and every day would be a surprise. Mm-hmm. I mean, The Sixth Sense wouldn't be a bad one. Because, like, every viewing, you'd be like, no fucking way! <laughs> he was dead the whole time! And you're like, yeah. <laughs> the next day, you watch it again, you're like, no fucking way! You'd be the worst person in the nursing home. <laughs> like, this fucking guy, again, with this. He loves The Sixth Sense. He just don't remember it. What a gift. <laughs> Every day is a brand new viewing of the Sixth Sense for him. Um, hmm. Do I want one of my movies? You'd be like, that Silent Bill guy looks just like me. Yeah, I like that actor. Uh, cut of his jib. I hope he does more things. It's not bad. It could be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, let me see. And I, I'm tempted to say Endgame because, like, it's so utterly enjoyable. But if you went in cold to Endgame, as you would if you were forgetting every time, would it be the same movie? Because you wouldn't know the all the movies leading up to it. Yeah, it feels like it needs to be a singular thing. Yeah, standalone, right? Could you imagine if it was like Back to the Future 2? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening here? Yeah, what happened and what's going to fucking happen next? <laughs> this is the worst choice. <laughs> um, maybe Cinema Paradiso. Hmm. 
love that movie and i still love the ending of that movie one of my favorite endings to a movie of all time very emotional and i think that would be beautiful to rediscover every day as if it was the first time i mean oh my god to see a movie that epic that touching over and over again for the rest of your life and never remembering that you've already seen it even though i remember seeing it i still enjoy watching that movie it's still so like it's about the love of movies what about you guys i mean i'm tempted to say into the spider-verse um you know it's it's it doesn't require previous knowledge of spider-man uh, and it does a very good job of of introducing you to the whole spider-man concept okay let's do this for the last time yeah and then they just tell you everything you need to know um i think and i'm also tempted to do like some big fucking reveal like you know the the usual suspects you know it's like oh 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 that's what like you know like the sixth sense like oh some big giant twist that i that i never see coming um but i think i'm gonna choose like the princess bride that's what i was gonna say you know like it's it's a perfect fucking movie it's so sweet it's funny it's it's this just confection of a film that that you'll i don't know like it's just it it feels like the warmth that you want to be able to to live in for for a good long while mm. um you know in the same way that cinema paradiso is that kind of thing which is like hey i just want to be hugged for two hours um and transported into a place that has no pain and has no fear and has no whatever it's just wonder and glory um matt dotsko in chat said honestly surprised no one here has said star wars meaning in chat or on the show mm. too easy it's like, it's, of course. Thought about it, but yeah. Um, uh, Mads14 said, Raiders of the Lost Ark or E.T.? Great choices. Mm. Ooh, E.T. Yeah. Live stream says The Matrix. Great choice. I almost went with Iron Giant. Ooh, another great choice. Because it's just, I remember being surprised by how much that movie affected me because I had so little expectations for it and was just knocked out by it mm. uh jc you co-signed uh princess bride yeah i mean like you could choose almost any one of the pixar movies also i feel like early pixar like mm -hmm. toy story i think would be great oh my god did you see that fucking inside out 2 trailer no. yeah for the pixar movie the, the, you know they're doing it again perfect that movie's gonna make a lot of money and it's it broke records for a disney trailer or a pixar trailer it's the most watched fucking disney trailer of all time or something wow um yeah they introduced more emotions anxiety anxiety who is voiced by i think maya hawk um yeah i can't wait man i like that first one Oh, somebody Ooh. said Project like Cheney, Roger yeah, Rabbit. Project. Who framed Roger Rabbit would be a good one. Yeah. Mm. Um, last born in chat says no one for Cocoon. No. No way. Yeah. Like oh, I, if you're an old person, maybe. It's the Lloyd Dobler choice, right? <laughs> like, hey, everybody, <laughs> so we're gonna watch this movie Cocoon. Uh, here's pretty good. Uh, you, you, you all find it very re relatable, I think. I think, uh, yeah, maybe if I was sitting there, fucking like the concept of like, you'll never get older and you'll never die, as Wilfred Brimley said to his grandson, would be comforting. So Cocoon is a strong choice. At first I was giving it the hairy eyeball, but now I'm like, you know what? I'm, not <laughs> thinking, I'm thinking of me now, not me when I'm an old man and what would make me feel comforted. Seeing other old people getting in the pool with giant space eggs, getting the rocks off. That might do it for me. <laughs> hmm. That's it, huh? That's a show. That's, That's a, a show. whole show, kid. It's a whole ass. <laughs> 
Okay. Three hours worth of show. <laughs> Three hours and 15 minutes worth of show. Man, oh, man. See, we're never going to get them fucking, fucking big views that the hate shows get, dude, because we're too long. We're too long, and we like things. <laughs> we don't belong in this world. <laughs> uh, that's recipe for love. Yeah. We're too long, and we like things. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I don't have hate in my heart. Uh, I love to uh, chit chat about these dopey things. Do you enjoy yourselves, kids? I know I enjoyed myself. Um, somewhere upstairs, I have a patient who's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Three hours with strangers. I'm up here fucking with a busted hip." So I'm gonna go back, put on my nurse ratchet cap. <laughs> candy striper most compassionate nurse in fucking cinema history and uh and take care of the patient y'all have a good time kids if you did that has everything to do with the other two guys man give it up for banff man he put us into your homes onto your phones wherever you're watching us right now i think we had two thousand people at max or whatever fuck you we'll take it yeah that's that's because Banff man brought you there. Thank you, Banff man. Um, and the guy with all the fucking intelligent, intelligent ticks, um, is the intelligent, elegant Mark Bernard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. He's the reason you come. Me, you're like, oh, let's see what that old clown's up to. Silent Biff. I remember him from back in the day. Um, <laughs> I'm like fucking Paul Lind and the old Hollywood squares. People are like, I don't know what he's what he did, but he's always there, and that makes me feel good. He's famous just for being famous. Um, but once you get here, you get quality programming because Mark's smart. Yeah, we smart. try our best in these parts. Bernardin. Um, there it is, kids. Lots, uh, lots more. When are we doing this again? People asking us when we're doing this in the bar. When are we doing it live? It, that is entirely up to you, sir. You tell us when you can break away from uh, from your patient. Yeah, good point. JC, when are we going to go live again? When do we go to the bar? Banff. Um, we could do... There was one request that we do uh, from chat the 28th, which would be the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, if people are around then. Two weeks from today. I'm down. Let's huh? do it to it. It'll actually probably be a shorter show than the one today. Because you just drive down, we do 90 minutes, you're home, and be under three hours. True. Yeah, it's at least free to, uh, to help uh, spell you on uh, nursemaid duty. That'd be me. Mm -hmm. I could ask her to do that so I could just... Go to the bar. I gotta go to the bar. Going to the bar, ma. Get in the car. Go to the bar. Earthgazer is pointing out we are getting close to the 500th episode. Is that true? No. Is it? No. Did we 400? just do 400? Yeah, we're at 413. I mean, technically, I guess we are getting closer to 500, just not that close. <laughs> it's it's, it's like, always there. It's like three years away. We do about 26 shows a year on average so we're about three years away stick around <laughs> we're getting there um there it is my friends there it is um anani mass all night in chat has said oh my god kevin smith just read my comment i'm your youngest fan at 11 please respond quickly it took me a while but there's my response anani mass anani <laughs> mass now go to sleep. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make sure my patient is sleeping. Go to bed, Nani Mas. Yeah, you yeah. You're he's 11. A he's a smart. <laughs> he's um, all right, folks. There it is, kids. Um did you have a good time? Fucking I know I did. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Hell yeah. We'll do it again. Mhm. Mm yeah.
for Fat Man Beyond, kids. Uh, that's it for Fat Man Beyond. Tune in. No, fuck. How do I do this? <laughs> And that and fucking, I was I was confusing it with Babel going. And that, how do I end it? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. I know, Cause, right? Because I never do it. Uh, that's Fat Man Beyond for this week, kids. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. And tune in yeah. next week for saying. Yeah, that. There it is. And that, my friends, is Fat Man Beyond for this week. Um, I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Mark Bernard. Tune in next time. We're back on track. Same fat time. Same fat channel. Uh, Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. And then the De Rigor Jeff's Kiss. Mwah. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody. And welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you